from KPAX and MTN Sports. This is Grizzly Gridiron Classics. The Montana Grizzlies were on their way to their second national championship appearance under Bobby Houck in another dominant year. That season, UM hosted MSU in their annual rivalry match, and the Grizzlies went to the throwbacks to surprise fans when they took the field against their arch rivals. The first quarter from the 2008 Montana-Montana State game will begin after this. It's time for kickoff on Grizzly Gridiron Classics. A very mild and comfortable day here in Missoula for today's 108th meeting between the Grizzlies and Bobcats. Welcome back, everybody. Phil Buck, Grady Bennett, Mike Callahan. We'll be joined by Derek Berkeley and Amanda Maynard a bit later. As you can see, we have the coin toss. And gentlemen, as we were talking about in the open, we want to apologize for our technical difficulties off the top of the broadcast, but one guy that we did not get to talk about, we heard about Demetrius Crawford, the running back for the Bobcats, Chase Reynolds on the other side of the ball having a better year for the Grizzlies. Yeah, he absolutely is, and uh, you know, I think last year, But uh, that game uh, big play running back that Montana needed this year. And uh, I'll tell you what, I think the thing Chase does is he gives Montana, uh, he, he does three things really well. He cuts downhill, I mean, he makes one cut and he goes. He has great vision. And he also finishes. And look at this, Phil. Throwbacks. Wow. How do you like that, Grizz Nation? Talk about throwing a curveball. The Grizzlies warmed up in their all maroons and they hit the field in the throwback copper and gold. Well, you know I'm loving it, Phil. This is awesome. <laughs> I tell you what, I feel like I just ran out there with them a little bit, Mike. Look at those colors. I got to tell you, I'm a little bit excited, too, because the, the colors I remember from the mid-'80s, and we had a lot more success back there from a Bobcat <laughs> standpoint. So I got hope today. Well, if this crowd wasn't already fired up, that put a charge into Washington Grizzly Stadium as both teams have taken the field. We're ready to get things underway here in the 108th meeting between the Bobcats and Grizzlies. There you see Bobby Houck in his sixth season as head coach at the University of Montana. A little throwback action on coach there as well. Well, obviously everybody knows why they went to the new colors. Uh, it's, it's much easier to print those colors and it's done a lot better in the sales department, of course, but Boy, I tell you what, those old colors, those of us that were able to play in those, the, the copper, gold, and silver, uh, those sweet memories, and uh, that's a good look for those Montana Grizzlies coming out today, and good timing, you know, a good scheme. Come out here in the Grizz Cat game and, and bring out the throwbacks. Well, I'm looking around at this uh, <coughs> stadium filled with maroon. I think these people, they look a little out of place. Uh, <laughs> we have to, I'm waiting for them to make the switch as well. well. There's Cole Berquist, the senior quarterback for the Grizzlies. Also having a banner year here as a starter. Over 64% completion percentage. He's thrown for over 2,300 yards, 23 touchdowns to only five interceptions. Add to the fact that he's also ran for six touchdowns, and uh, he's a threat both with his arm and with his legs. He is, and that's one of the things Coach Houck stresses, and I think it's uh, indicative of the way this Montana Grizzly team as a team plays football, but he doesn't care about numbers. He's not looking at Cole's numbers and worried about uh, big stats jumping out. What he wants is efficiency, and Cole's one of the leaders in the nation in quarterback efficiency play. He moves his team down the field, he doesn't turn the ball over, and he produces points, and, and Cole has become real efficient in his career. Every year he's gotten better and better, and that's what Coach Houck cares about. The Grizzlies will get the ball to start the game. Eric Fisher set to kick things off for the Bobcats. The junior out of Billings West handles the punting and kicking duties for Montana State. Mark Mariani, Rob Schulte deep to receive for the Grizzlies. 
Mariani with a 94-yard punt return for a touchdown last week here against Idaho State. And we are underway in the 108th meeting between the Bobcats and Grizzlies. Mariani takes the opening kick at the five-yard line. Has the 20 out to the 30 where Mariani is brought down by Eric Fisher, the kicker. As we take a look at our offensive starters for the Grizzlies, brought to you by Allegiance, your benefits at work. Cole Berquist from San Clemente, California. Chase Reynolds, Drummond, Montana. Kevin Clebo, Billings West High School. Mike Verder, Helena High School. Mark Mariani, Haver High School. Rob Schulte, Great Falls, The Thundering Herd. Steve Feather, Frenchtown, Montana. We had a flag on the opening kick, offsides on the Bobcats. Penalty marker back at the 30-yard line. Interesting decision. Montana's just going to take the five-yard penalty from there and get the ball on the 37 instead of the re-kick. Uh, interesting decision by Coach Halk, but Montana's going to set up with a first and ten, and we talked about Mike in the open. Which team could establish the run first? Which team could stop the run best? And that's really going to be the play here early. Chase Reynolds gets the toss on first down across the 40 as we take a look at the rest of our offensive starters for the Grizzlies. Brought to you by Allegiance, your benefits at work. Levi Horn, Spokane, Washington. Colin Dow, Billings, Montana. J.D. Quinn, Garland, Texas. Taryn Hillsland, City, Montana. Brent Russell, Lewiston, Idaho. Three targets split wide for Cole Bergquist on second and four. He will work out of the shotgun. Chase Reynolds in the backfield. Bergquist, good protection. Steps up in the pocket. Intended for Mike Ferreter out of the slot who cannot make the catch. Let's take a look at our defensive starters for the Bobcats. Again, brought to you by Allegiance, your benefits at work. Dustin O'Connell, defensive end. Dan Ogden, D-tackle. Dylan Kinkler, defensive end. Chase Cazero, linebacker, Great Falls, Montana. Bobby Daly, middle linebacker. Jeff Price, uh, outside linebacker, Billings, Montana. The incompletion brings up a third and four. Four split wide for Bergquist. Bobcats come on a blitz. Bergquist steps up, still on his feet, and is dropped at the 40. Coming up to make the hit was Jeff Price, the junior linebacker out of Billing Skyview High School, and that brings up fourth down. Obviously, that's the kind of three and out situation. If it, if you're on the MSU side, you want to come out and get that defense established. They they brought the heat there with Bobby Daly up the middle, and he was able to collapse the pocket, and then he got some help from the rest of the guys on that one. Well, it was really good protection by Montana's offensive line. You've got to credit Montana State secondary. Great coverage, nobody open, and eventually that pocket's going to collapse on you. Cole held on to the ball for quite a while, just could not find anybody. Tyler Lule takes the Kenwood punt at the 17. No return as he's stopped by Donnie Lazowski, the freshman cornerback at O'Day High School in Seattle. Let's take a look at our offensive starters for the Bobcats. Again, brought to you by Allegiance, your benefits at work. Mark Desson, quarterback. Demetrius Crawford, running back, Fairfield, California. DeAndre Green, wide receiver, Oakland, California. Deion Tolliver, receiver, Long Beach, California. Ty Lule, wide receiver, State in Oregon. Joe Schreiber is tight end. On first down, Mark Desson with the swing pass out to DeAndre Green, who makes the catch for no gain. In fact, he stopped for a loss. Let's take a look at the rest of our offensive starters for the Bobcats. Again, brought to you by Allegiance, your benefits at work. Lou Salcedo, the left tackle. Conrad Burbank, left offensive guard. Jim Verlanek, center. Jeff Hansen, right guard. Mike Person, right tackle. Mark Desson, the sophomore, making his second collegiate start. And he hands off to Demetrius Crawford, who has a big lane up the middle, breaks a tackle, and Crawford to midfield. Across the 40, the 30, blockers across the 20, dives for the pylon and appeared to fumble out of bounds at the two. Well, that's just a great 
Great start if you're a Bobcat fan. He hits that hole and you see him here getting upfield. He had the one blocker out in front of him, tried to finish this thing in the end zone. I think you see the ball come out as he dives for the pylon there. But I think they're gonna rule that he was out of bounds at about the three yard line. Yeah, definitely ruled out of bounds. And it is a good thing because I think it might've ended up being a fumble into the end zone and a touchback, but he definitely went out of bounds. And so Montana State with the first huge play in this football game, they are set up uh, quite in the, trying to quiet this crowd down early, Mike. Yeah, which, you know, is a, a very important thing to do when you come into this stadium because the noise level just does go crazy. It's very disruptive for your offense here. People struggle with it year after year. You see them come in, uh, and uh, it definitely helps to get it started. But you'll hear them now for the rest of this drive. An 84-yard run for Crawford down to the Montana three. Short yardage, handoff right up the middle to C.J. Palmer. And Palmer gains maybe two stopped short of the goal line. Let's take a look at the defensive starters for the Grizzlies. Brought to you by Allegiance, your benefits at work. Jace Palmer, Big Sky High School, Missoula, Montana. Craig Mettler, Walla Walla, Washington. Town so nice to name it twice. Jesse Carlson, Billings West High. Mike Stadnick, Regina, Saskatchewan. Bobcats in a heavy set on second and goal from the one. Palmer dots the eye. Lule, the man in motion. Palmer will get it over the left side, lowers the shoulder. Still no signal. And he is stopped again at the one for no gain. The rest of our Grizzly starters on defense, again brought to you by Allegiance, your benefits at work. Sean Labsock, Billing Skyview. Brandon Fisher, Nashville, Tennessee. Tyler Corbin, Great Falls. Andrew Swank, number three, cornerback, Rolling Heights, California. Keith Thompson from Porterville, California. Ken Schillinger, Baker High School. Colt Anderson, Butte High School, Butte America. Third and goal for the Bobcats. Palmer again. Hitting the backfield. Colt Anderson, the senior safety from Butte, comes up to make the stop short of the goal line. Well, Grizz fans are not surprised to see Colt Anderson in that situation make such a big play. And how about this Grizzly defense? Coach Ash with the decision to make right here. But after getting gashed for a huge 84-yard run and that second play of this drive, they've held now three straight runs. And it looks like Montana State is going to go for it. And I agree with the call, Mike. Why not? Coach Ash in this situation, great decision. Uh, I agree, too. This is a, a game that you've got to go win. And this is a they're going to make an effort to do it here. Play action for Desson. Buying himself some time. Dodge for the goal line. Stopped and he fumbles. Montana football. Wow. Unbelievable. I like the call by Coach Ash. I like the call even to try the little bootleg. You know Desson's such a great athlete. He has a chance to throw or run it. But you got to give Montana's defense credit, of course. They cover it. They don't fall for the play fake. They cover it, and then look at this rally to the football. Watch how many copper, gold, and silver jerseys get to this ball and force the fumble. What a great goal line stand by Montana's defense. Yeah, that really, that's a big play. You got to give a lot of credit to Stadnick there. He gave what you talk about, wanting to give, uh, to have the run pass option there, and he got up field so quickly that he just took that run option away. Berquist and the Grizzly offense take over on their own five-yard line as Chase Reynolds gets into the secondary, spins off a tackler, finally stopped out at the 25-yard line. A 20-yard gain for Chase Reynolds. Well, that's what they needed is a little a little room, get some breathing room out of the backed up into their end zone. What a great first play after a huge turnover and a goal line stand by your defense. Get some breathing room right away and give your, give your offense a little chance to work. Sets up a first and 10 now from the Montana 25. Reynolds and Claybo in the backfield. Bergquist out of the shotgun. The swing for Claybo. Who stopped short of the line of scrimmage. As we take a look at the rest of the Bobcat starters on defense. Again, brought to you by Allegiance, your benefits at work. Corey Nickel, cornerback. Jamal Lewis, corner, Megan Georgia. Kevin Vittoriano, free safety. Arnold Briggs, safety, San Diego, California. 
Claybo, the junior fullback out of Billings West, loses a yard on first down. That brings up second and 11. Bergquist will try and run it himself. Not much there as Jeff Price comes up to stop him. Bergquist gains one back to the original line of scrimmage. Well, Jeff Price has had two really nice plays for Montana State thus far. Out of the first five plays run, he came up and got the sack on Cole Bergquist in the first series, and this time he avoids a block. Great job, linebacker play of shedding a block. It looked like an offensive guard was going to get to him, but he got uh, off of that block and pursued the quarterback. Good play. Brings up third and long for Montana now. The Grizz over 43% on third downs this season. That leads the Big Sky Conference. Well, and Phil, we watched last week. Idaho State did a great job of really handling, and you see Montana State with the big sack there. It's Isaiah Taito. The senior linebacker, the backup linebacker, converted running back. Yeah, you could see, it, as Montana State does so often in that third and long situation, they'll, they choose to go with the three down lineman set and bring pressure with their linebackers upfield. There you can see Tato using some of that uh, enthusiasm to get in there. He made a lot of nice plays last week in that same type of package. Tato. Sorry, Phil, I was mentioning last week Montana really struggled on third downs and thus far today 0 for 2. So they led the Big Sky all year long in third down efficiency, but have struggled their last two games. Low snap taken by Ken Wood, and this punt will go out of bounds at the 44. Bobcats take over with good field position when we come back. Well, fans, coming up at halftime, we'll talk with Montana State President Jeffrey Gamble and U.N. President George Dennison. Also, Ian Davidson will announce this year's Scholar Athlete Award winners. Plus, we'll have the highlights and statistics from the first half, all brought to you by the bookstore at the University of Montana, your Grizzly logo wear source since 1921. The Bobcat defense has come to play here midway through the first quarter. They have given the ball to their offense with excellent field position as Montana State starts on the 44, but flags come in on all sides before the snap. Well, how many times, Phil, we talked about it a lot last week of, of actually going back and looking at how many times. Ball start, offense number 68, five yard penalty, first down. How many times opponents come into this stadium with this crowd noise and jump offsides and false starts. There's so many penalties. This crowd really does a great job of getting loud at the right times and forcing a lot of those mistakes. Conrad Burbank, the redshirt freshman out of Reno, Nevada, flagged for the penalty as we got the call from today's head referee, Bruce Palmer. First and 15. As Crawford takes it up the middle again. This time, just a gain of five back to the original line of scrimmage. Well, and isn't that odd that you say just a gain of five? And it shows you how good Montana State is in the running game because, yeah, it's just a gain of five, but most people would die to have a five-yard run. You see how effective Montana State's offensive front are. They stayed on their blocks right there. They moved that line of scrimmage, and uh, Crawford just can pick and choose what lanes open up for him. Second and 10 from the 44. Deion Tolliver, the man in motion, as Crawford gets it again. This time he goes for one. All right, you can see you talk about the, the offensive line here for the Bobcats. Really has been a, uh, a strength for them all year. And you can see here that they do have uh, Jim Berlanek, number 61, is back starting at center today. He has been out, uh, I believe, for the last three games and was replaced by a redshirt freshman. Alex Terrion, who's done a great job, but obviously the Bobcats uh, are happy to see him back in there, senior co-captain getting to play in this uh, last Bobcat Grizzly game. Four split wide for Dessen on third and nine. Here comes the rush. Dessen has to get rid of it, and it's incomplete. Jace Palmer was coming off the edge, and the Grizzlies had called the blitz, and that will bring up fourth down. Yeah, absolutely. That's one thing you know that Coach Paulson's going to do today for sure when you get a young quarterback only in his second start. And I really think, Mike, that sometimes a quarterback's second start is his most difficult because sometimes the first one you're in there and you don't even really understand what's going on. And all of a sudden it hits you in the second week and you got to prepare. And you know Coach Paulson is really going to mix it up today on Mark Dessen with lots of different looks. That time, strong safety Shan Schillinger comes on the blitz. High punt taken by Mark Mariani at the 26. 
Gets a block and he's across midfield. He had a 94 yarder last year, last week, and here's another one. Touchdown Grizzlies, Mark Mariani. Mark Mariani continues to do it for the Montana Grizzlies. Dial it up. When Montana needs a play, it's Mark Mariani, whether it's in the passing game or lately in special teams. As you said, Phil, last week, Montana was struggling. They were not playing very well. They needed something to happen, and Mark Mariani delivers a 94-yard punt return for a touchdown. Today, he does it again. It's kind of a crazy start for both squads, but Mariani gets it started, and the Grizzlies are on the board. Brody McKnight. The freshman kicker, a transfer from Purdue, comes on, tacks on the extra point, and the Grizzlies draw first blood. Mark Mariani's second punt return touchdown of the season. Well, coming up near the end of the game, we will present the Northwestern Energy players of the game. Northwestern Energy delivering a bright future. And with that 75-yard punt return for a touchdown, Mark Mariani, the junior from Haver, has thrown his name into the hat. I tell you what, yes, he has. And you know what, Coach Houck, you see him pictured right there on the screen. I think he feels pretty good, Phil, about the seven, too, because there's been a little, uh, a lot of interesting happenings with Montana's PAT field goal unit over the last couple weeks, really all season long. So the fact that they were able to get the big touchdown and then come on and convert the extra point makes uh, Coach Houck feel pretty good to get this thing started. Brody McKnight kicks off from the 30. Taken at the nine yard line by Aaron Mason, who has blockers tripped up short of the 30 yard line by Tom Martin. Tom Martin, we talked about him last week. What a great young man, a program kid, comes in, doesn't get a lot of time on the field, but has stayed committed to this program and done what's asked of him, become a special teams contributor and flies around. And Coach Houck has really done such a good job, I think, of, of selling those kids that aren't gonna maybe be ones or twos on your offense or defense, but selling those guys and being a very important, important part of the program and playing solid special teams. Martin, the senior out of Columbus, elected special teams captain this season by his teammates. I think, Mike, as you look at Montana State now, it's going to be really key for them what they do on first and second down because if they can stay out of obvious passing situations by Mark Dessen, they're going to be obviously much better off. Yeah, and it, it, as we say, they, they open with the pass. That time it looked like uh, Dessen had the receiver open early but wanted to look downfield. And let's see as he rolls out here, it, it appeared that... Uh, I think it was Ty Lule came out of the slot and just ran a little uh, out route up into the right into the hash there and was open. I, we're not going to see it, but uh, for whatever reason, Dessen decided to uh, hold on and try to look for something a little more downfield, and there was just nothing there. Second and ten after the incompletion, Dessen to work out of the shotgun. Hands off. This is Crawford trying to find some room, and there is none. Well, in Montana's defense kind of starting to settle in now, it looks like. They got the wake-up call when that big 84-yarder ripped off by Crawford. You know, there was a little challenge amongst themselves, and probably the coaches getting after him on that first play there uh, after that first series. But they rose up, had a huge goal line stand, and now it looks like they're starting to settle in a little bit against this excellent running attack of Montana State. Third and 11 for Montana State. Neither team has converted on third down yet today. Potentially a quarterback draw situation right here, guys. Spread them out with five wideouts, and instead of forcing Mark to make a throw, let him run for it. Instead, he airs it out. Deion Tolliver, the intended receiver, hauls it in across midfield and forced out of bounds by Andrew Swink at the 31-yard line. What a perfect ball by Mark Dessen, a perfect ball. I mean, you cannot throw a fade route any better. You spread them out, you got five wide outs, and all you're doing really is looking for a matchup, and Mark finds it. Of course, Billings senior fans are very used to seeing this. Mark Dessen did it so often, had such a great career playing for Coach Mark Sulcer down there. Billings senior leading them to the state championship game and uh, delivers a perfect strike right there. The Grizzlies playing without their true freshman cornerback, Trumaine Johnson, who left last week's game with what appeared to be a knee injury. He leads the team with four interceptions this year. As Crawford, with a big hole up the middle, has the 20 inside the 15 before Andrew Swink and Colt Anderson stop him down at the 13. Well, if we get a replay here, what you'll see, guys, is 
it, this is where sometimes a blitz will hurt you. Watch Tyler Corwin on the bottom of your screen. He comes on outside blitz. So when Crawford cuts it back, there's no linebacker left in that gap to fill. So it's a huge hole, good vision, good cutback by Crawford, and a big play for Montana State. First and 10 from the Bobcats from the Montana 13. Crawford once again down inside the 10 as Crawford already over 100 yards rushing for the day. Yeah, this uh, it's a great start for him, but you know, really the Bobcats, they've been down here once. They've been a very productive red zone offense all year long, and they've got to. I mean, it's absolutely essential. They need to come out of here with not just a field goal, but they've got to get a touchdown and, and kind of right the ship here a little bit after the Grizzlies' big special team play. Bobcats can still pick up a first down at the Montana three. Desson out of the shotgun, fakes the handoff. We'll try to get the corner himself. Coming up to make the stop, Tyler Corwin, the senior out of Great Falls High School. Well, and it's not a bad, uh, it's not a bad play call schematically. I mean, you're given a look, you're play faking really to, to a good running threat, obviously in Crawford, and you keep the ball with your quarterback. But right now, Crawford is so hot. I'm not sure you're better off just giving it to him almost every yeah, play. Yeah, you know, and I, I think you're right. You know, they did that play was set up very well. It looked like uh, Burbank just missed that block out there on the corner, or that one might have gone all the way into the end zone. But I agree with you, Grady. You got to when you've got your bread and butter guy, you got to feed him. Swink the corner, also there to stop the quarterback. Third and six is Desson. Tucks it to run and stopped for no gain. George Mercer, the junior out of Libby, makes the tackle. Well, and there's the quarterback draw that I said Bobcats might be setting up on the last third down play. And sure enough, there it was. Grizzlies did a nice job, Mercer, of just reading it and not getting too far up in the backfield on his pass rush, playing off of the block of the offensive tackle and making the play. Jason Cunningham has been a breath of fresh air for the Bobcat fans this year. They struggled mightily in the field goal kicking game last season. Cunningham, though, 12 of 17 so far this year as he knocks this one through. And the Bobcats are on the board with 2.24 to play in the first quarter. Seven to three, our score here in Missoula with 2.24 to play in the first quarter in this 108th meeting between Montana and Montana State. Mark Desson, the sophomore quarterback out of Billings Senior in just his second collegiate start with a big play on third down on that last drive, a 42-yard completion to Deion Tolliver to set up a 25-yard field goal. As you take a look at the MontanaGrizzlies.com scoring drive for news and stats on all Grizzly athletics, log on to MontanaGrizzlies.com. Mark Mariani fields this kick at the one. Waits for his wedge at the 20 and gets it out to the 25. Desson with the big completion on third down on that last drive. Let's send it down to Amanda Maynard, who has more on the sophomore Bobcat quarterback. Thanks, guys. Well, you mentioned a little while ago about the crowd noise really being able to get to the opponents. Coach Ash earlier this week said there's no guy he would rather have lead this offense than Mark Desson. He says he has a really calm, cool approach to the game, which is exactly what the Cats need in a game like this. Phil? Thank you, Amanda. The Montana offense has managed only 17 yards so far in this game. That compared with 147 yards of offense for Montana State. So Cole Berquist will look to get things going here as he works out of the shotgun on first and 10. Here's the screen pass for Rob Schulte, who gets a block. And is ridden out of bounds just short of the first down marker by Bobby Daly, the senior linebacker out of Helena Capital. Well, and it's definitely time for Montana's offense to get it going a little bit after struggling quite a bit last week and never really getting in a groove against Idaho State. You know, Mariani has got him started again on special teams like he did last week, but Montana's offense really needs something good to happen for them to kind of get their groove back. It's been a few weeks since they've really felt good about how they've played. Nine-yard gain for Schulte brings up second and one. Here's the flea flicker as Chase Reynolds is hit as he tosses it back, and this will go for a loss. Chris Colone, the senior out of San Diego, California, got through to fall on Bergquist. 
You can see he gets good good penetration right up the middle and is able to disrupt the pitch as well as, as follow it up and then and nearly get on the ball. Uh, Colonia has been was out last week. He's been banged up with a knee that's bothered him all year. Uh, able to come back today and, and make a big play for the Bobcats there. Force long, long, long yardage for the Grizzlies on third down. Brings up a third and 13. Montana 0 of 2 so far on third down this afternoon. Bergquist has time. Looks long for Mariani on the sideline. Goes up, cannot make the grab. Incomplete. The ruling on the sideline, and that brings up fourth down. Once again, great coverage by Montana State, and their defense is playing very, very well in this first quarter, holding Montana to just 17 yards, as you mentioned. Actually, probably 14 now with that with that loss on the last play. Uh, and it's a good thing Colony made a great play right there because Ferder, because of the flea flicker action, Ferder was behind the defense. He was wide open. That could have been a Montana touchdown. A good time to call that play on second one, but Colony with a great play. And, and I'll tell you what, Kevin Rattoriano almost blocked that punt. The Bobcats will once again take over with excellent field position as Ty Lule lets this one bounce. It's downed at the 41. Well, here we go. You know, the, you talk about the the Grizzly offense is struggling. The Bobcat defense is, is playing very well, as they really have all year. But now we've got a, the uh, Bobcat offense that has really has been chewing up the yards but doesn't have all the points that they uh, would have you would think that they would have out of those two long drives settling for just the field goal on the second drive after getting stopped on the four down effort in the first one they've got to go and continue this momentum but also finish a little stronger Desson off the play action on first down has lots of time looking deep for Lule and Colt Anderson was there in pass coverage this play is ruled incomplete well Colt Anderson Everybody knows is still on the finalist list for the Buck Buchanan Award, the Defensive Player of the Year in the FCS, and he shows why here. He had come up on the play action, but you won't get to see it on the replay. Does a fantastic job of retreating, reading the play action pass, and getting back and, and breaking that up. And uh, trying to argue a little bit that Lule might have actually interfered with him on the interception, but just a great play by Colt Anderson. Brings up a second and ten. This time Crawford will get it. As Demetrius Crawford picks up eight. Stopped just short of midfield. Well, we talked about Demetrius Crawford uh, being the workhorse for the Bobcats this year, and he really has. You see it on that run, and as we see it again here, they're just it, nothing fancy. They, they give it up to him. They've got a nice double team there. He cuts inside of it, which he so often does. Is I don't think but that's where that ball was designed to go. But with his vision and his ability to make the quick cut, he gets that thing back in the, in the second gap and turns it upfield. Third and two. And when what in all likelihood will be the final play of the first quarter. Desson. Pump fakes. Tries to make a move and is stopped short of midfield and short of a first down. As that brings the first quarter to a close, Montana leads it seven to three. Get ready for the second quarter as Grizzly Gridiron Classics continues. Start of the second quarter in Missoula. Montana Grizzlies lead the Bobcats seven to three in this 108th meeting between the two schools. Bobcats on to punt. Rob Schulte, the senior from Great Falls, will fair catch the punt at the 18-yard line. That's where the Grizzly offense will take over. Let's send it down to Derek Berkeley, who's on the sidelines. All right, Phil, I think everybody right now probably trying to adjust their television sets. Don't the Grizzlies are wearing the old school colors. Joining me here, the Montana Vice President, Jim Foley. Jim, how did this de decision happen to use these uniforms? You know, we got together, Coach Houck and Athletic Director O'Day and I in August and thought it would be a neat idea to do it, but we wanted to see how the season went. So we ordered them brand new. We're not going to sell anything retail. It's a one-time only. 
and uh, we, were, we were waiting to see how the season went, so we thought it was perfect to send him out now. And you said that only you and Jim O'Day and Coach Houck knew about this till That's today. It. It, it proves you can keep a secret on our campus. I don't know how it happened, but it happened. So the players didn't even know till this morning. Tells me what happens with these uniforms afterwards. You know, the players heard about it first thing this morning in their team meetings when Coach Houck unveiled them to them. We're going to give the helmets and the jerseys to the seniors, uh, and the rest they're going to sell off to benefit the Grizzly, Grizzly Scholarship Association. So it's kind of a neat deal. Definitely. I think Grizz fans might want to see a little bit more of it. We still see some old burnt orange around the around the stadium here, but uh, right now the Grizz looking pretty good in their old school unis, guys. Well, thank you for that, Derek. Second and seven now for the Montana offense who works out of the eye. Chase Reynolds trying to find some room and he has stopped for no gain. We just heard a huge cheer go up in the stands here at Washington Grizzly Stadium. It's because they made the announcement. Eastern Washington with a 14-0 lead as they start the second quarter over Weber State in Ogden. Well, it definitely keeps Montana's string of potentially uh, winning another Big Sky championship. It, it keeps that alive, makes it uh, go up to 11 if, if that score holds. And obviously a lot of football game to play. The first quarter just ended. Grizzlies still have yet to convert on third down today. This is third and six. Bergquist looking for Mike Ferreter, who's led too much. Cannot haul it in incomplete, and that brings up fourth down. Pretty good play call here, I think. They know now that in these third and longs, the Cats are going with that three-man set and bringing the linebacker and vacating that middle of the field. Just good coverage there uh, by the cornerback. The route was there, but uh, he, uh, Lewis just was on him like glue, a little too close from the, some of the boos of the Grizzly fans. They had a difference of opinion with the referee there, but another good stop for the Bobcats. One last punt, Kevin Rittoriano almost blocked it. It was very, very close. So look for Montana State to continue to bring some pressure on this punt. Ken Wood gets it off. Lule initially said he didn't want to return it, but then picks it up, gets it out to the 40-yard line where he stopped by Dan Bowden. Once again, Bobcats take over with good field position. Well, again, fans, coming up at the half, we'll talk with Montana State President Jeffrey Gamble and UM President George Dennison, also Ian Davidson. We'll announce this year's Scholar Athlete Award winners. Plus, we'll have the first half highlights and stats all brought to you by the bookstore at the University of Montana, your Grizzly logo wear source since 1921. Dessen. And the Bobcats take over on their own 39 as Demetrius Crawford once again gets into the secondary. A 14-yard gain for Crawford. On the outside linebacker, the, the wide hustles down on... First down, Crawford once again gets the handoff. Mike Stadnick tackles him by his shoelaces. Crawford still picks up about five. You know, we haven't talked about it here, and not a big run here, but you know, when you've got a, a team like MSU that's really built on the rush, we talk, we've talked about Crawford, 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 but it's it's been those big boys up front that have been getting it done for him all year, and, and in, You've got really got to appreciate the fact that every press conference I think I've ever had him uh, heard him do, he mentions those guys, and, it, and there is a sincere appreciation for the openings they create. Dessen off the play fake on second and six, looking long down the sideline. Incomplete, but the flag comes in. interference on the defense number three 15 yard penalty from the previous spot automatic first down Tolliver the intended receiver down the sideline swink the transfer corner out of San Antonio Mount San Antonio Junior College flag for the penalty that sets Montana State up now with a first and ten from the Montana 28 
Crawford again on first down. Still on his feet. Finally brought down after a gain of eight by Brandon Fisher. Well, I just mentioned the play of the offensive line for the Bobcats this year, and you can, this is a play where what, something that they do a great job with, and it, it works very well with Crawford's running style, is they get on their blocks and they stay on their blocks. Well, they're not necessarily moving the line of scrimmage all the time. They are occupying that man and giving him the ability to hit that crease. 10 carries, 145 yards for Crawford, and he gets it again. Tries to bounce it back, and again, Fisher's there to stop him. Very close to the first down marker. Well, this would be a big third and short for the Bobcats down here. They need to need to convert here and try and get an opportunity for seven and not settle for another field goal on two consecutive possessions. Third and short. Crawford again tries the left side. And he stopped for a loss. Shen Schillinger, the junior out of Baker, way out in eastern Montana, makes the stop. Fourth down coming up. Have a player down on the field. Yeah, and you can see, I think we talked about uh, Crawford's kind of got a unique running style where he is willing to give that ground to try and get to the outside. There's there's a play where I think you got to have a little awareness of your third and short. Uh, when you get that one on one out there, you've got to, you know, I think if he goes forward at the end of that run and just tries to pick up the one and not make the big play to the outside, we're probably looking at first and 10 and uh, the offense is still out there instead of the field goal unit. A 37 yard attempt. Jason Cunningham on to attempt what would be a 37 yard field goal. His long for the season, 52 yards. Cunningham's kick, no good, wide right. Seven to three remains our score. So the Bobcat drive stalled and a first and 10 now for the fifth ranked Grizzlies from their own 20 yard line. This field goal by Jason Cunningham. Here's Burquist on the play fake. He needs to get rid of it and does. Burquist in all sorts of trouble, but was able to unload the ball incomplete. That'll bring up second and 10. Yeah, the Bobcats are able to get pressure here. You see, uh, I think it's the outside linebacker on the left side. Chase Gazzaro comes and gets chipped a little bit, but continues his pursuit. Smith is getting upfield on the outside to get a little pressure there, and he just, uh, no choice, makes a good decision to throw that one away. I don't think uh, even if Stephen Failer was able to get that, he was headed the wrong direction. Burke was just two of six for nine yards so far in the ball game. So we have a second and ten coming up. The play fake for Reynolds. Bergquist takes it himself over the right side, picks up a block, hurdles a tackler, and gets the first down. Jordan Craney, the sophomore strong safety out of Pocatello, Idaho, thought he had Bergquist stopped short, but he did not. That moves the chains for the Grizzlies. Berkwist does a good job here. They got a good block there. You see the linebacker go down, another back go down out there, and then uh, Jordan Craney just doesn't quite need to make the play that he needs to on the end. Just the second first down managed by this Grizzly offense so far today. Berkwist making a change at the line of scrimmage. Reynolds the lone setback, and he will get it. Tries the right side. 
He runs into Bobby Daly, but still picks up about five. As the sophomore running back from Drummond continues to have a fantastic season, 13 rushing touchdowns for Chase Reynolds. Averaging over six yards a carry this season, that leads the Big Sky Conference. Yeah, and that may be what the Grizzlies need to get, get this offense moving is to get some of that yardage on first down and make it a little bit more manageable. They've, been, they've really struggled in those third and long situations so far. Three targets split wide for Bergquist. Out of the shotgun on second and five. Here comes the heat. Unloads underneath for Mariani. As complete to Mark Mariani. Stopped short of the 40-yard line. Again, it was Craney there to make the tackle, and that brings up third down. The yeah, we got another third down, but this, you know, a little bit more manageable. You want to be in that third and one situation. They've been, you know, third and five and third and six and longer, where it, it's a much tougher conversion situation. Here, the Bobcats it takes them. They, they got to stay in that four-man front. They don't get the option of doing as many uh, things and bringing pressure with those backers. They've got to stay in here and really respect the run and try and stop this short carry. This just third and two. Two tight ends to the left. Berquist, the play action, steps up, unloads, and overthrows Mariani. There in pass coverage was Corey Nickel, the junior transfer from Orange Coast Junior College. The incompletion brings up fourth down, and on comes the punt unit for the Grizzlies. Well, the Bobcats, <laughs> with the exception of that one play on the punt return, have really, I don't know, that have dominated. I think that might be uh, not too strong of a term, actually, but they don't have the, the big number. They've got the great stats. The one stat where they are failing to uh, get out in front of the Grizzlies is on that scoreboard. Ken Wood, a high end-over-end oh, -end kick, not fielded by Lule, who lets it take a bounce, and it rolls out of bounds at the 18. That's where the Bobcats will take over on the other side of the break. Still 7-3, Grizzlies. Grizzlies lead at 7-3 here, 8-24 left to play in the opening half in this 108th meeting between Montana and Montana State. Mark Desson, the sophomore out of Billings Senior, Montana State's third string quarterback. Looks to hand it off on first down. The fumble comes out, and Montana recovers. That looked like the number 91 static that got on that one. Here's the snap. Let's see if we can tell what happened. I think he tries to make that ball fake inside to uh, Mason. It just doesn't uh, get a grip on the ball after the fake. Tough break for the Bobcats. Maybe the break that the Grizzlies need to get this offense moving. Montana will take over at the Montana State 15. And fans, we want to remind you, D.A. Davidson and Company is proud to support college academic excellence through its Scholar Athlete Award in Montana and the Davidson Student Investment Programs at the University of Montana, Montana State University, and 18 other colleges and universities across the region. D.A. Davidson and Company, financial advice for the long run member SIPC. Chase Reynolds on first down over the right side, down to the 10 yard line, a five yard pickup for the spark plug out of Drummond. See on the replay here, they just do the underneath handoff and he's just getting up field. He's got great leg drive, able to pick up five. Bobby Daly there to, to finish him off and, and keep him from advancing that thing for a first down. Brings up second and five. Grizzlies can pick up a first down at the Montana State six. Reynolds will try it again. Up the middle, very near first down yardage. It appears they will spot this ball just short of the first down marker. Reynolds now seven carries today for 29 yards. We have some state championships in the high school ranks going on across the state. There's your Class C eight-man championship. Weibo with a 6-0 lead over Superior there in the first quarter. Third and one now for the Grizzlies. 
They have yet to convert a third down today. Reynolds again is stopped short. Oh, that's a great play on the tackle there, Darren Kickler. He's not even supposed to be back. The guy breaks his, his ankle early in the year. Uh, did a great job rehabbing and surprised everybody to get back up in this lineup. But he runs him down clear from the backside. He got some front support from Bobby Daly, but that's just a, a big play for the Bobcats. But it looks like the Grizzlies, as did the Bobcats the first time they were down here, are going to choose to go for it on fourth down. Kinkler, the former walk-on from Winifred, with the big stop to bring up fourth down. Reynolds will try it once more. Gets a push, and I don't think he got it. He will not. Chase Reynolds stopped short of a first down. And so Bobcat D stiffens. Well, that defensive front, well, it's been kind of revolving door injury-wise for the Bobcats. They are the strength of this team. You can see they hold their ground there and get up and are able to, to stop him short of first down. Uh, we've now changed. Uh, we've had both teams have done a great job with the goal line stand there. Let's see if the Bobcats can now capitalize. Montana State is absolutely dominating this game. If you're a Montana State fan, you just have to feel weird because they have dominated this first half, and yet they're down 7-3. to three. Crawford, out of his own end zone, takes the handoff, gets it out, a pickup of one before he is stopped hard by the Montana defensive front as we approach six minutes to play here in the opening half. Second and nine for Desson. Working out of the shotgun. Again, we'll give to Crawford. Tries to cut it back and gets just across the 10. Actually gets out to near the 13 before he stopped by Colt Anderson. Well, this is a good example of what we talked about with Crawford is that he is more than willing to cut that ball back. He doesn't see anything out front the right side. Gets back and is able to sneak it off the left and pick up a few yards and get him into a manageable third down situation. Demetrius Crawford, second in the conference in rushing coming into this game, already over 150 yards on the ground, and we're not even at the half. Third and three for the Bobcats. Try to swing it out for Mason, and he is underthrown. So that brings up fourth down, and the Bobcats will have to punt it out of their own end zone. Shanked punt here, takes a grizzly bounce, and bounces out of bounds at the 31. So about a third of a field in front of the Montana offense as they will take over with excellent field position. Well, boy, you can see the special team situation is, is the one area of this game that has really gone the Grizzlies' way so far today. The Bobcats struggling not only in the punt coverage, but they've they get a short kick here. Uh, earlier, they had a chance to pin the Bobcats down, or the Grizzlies down uh, on a short punt, and really only, I think that was only about a 28-yarder on that one. So they've got to improve in the special teams. Two tight ends to the left for the Montana offense. Chase Reynolds in the backfield. Burquist, the quick drop into the slot. Mike Ferreter down to the six-yard line. because you're leading on the scoreboard, but you don't feel very good about the way you're actually playing in this football game. And right there, a big throw. Mike Ferreter is able to tuck it up in between the two safeties just on an inside slant route and take it down to the six-yard line. And now I know Mike has been calling for Montana State to punch one into the end zone, but I think maybe even more so a sense of urgency for Montana's offense to get something into the end zone and get something going offensively. Heavy set for the Grizzlies. Reynolds, left side. Dives for the end zone. Touchdown, Montana. Chase Reynolds, 
Again, earlier I said sometimes you call a blitz and it almost takes you out of the play. Chase Cazero, bottom of your screen, number 31, is going to come on the blitz. He's picked up by the pulling guard, which allows a bigger hole for Reynolds. And what an effort to extend the ball and get it into the end zone by Chase Reynolds. 14th rushing touchdown of the season for the sophomore from Drummond. Brody McKnight on to attempt the extra point for the Grizzlies. His kick is up and good. 4.04 to play in the half. Montana leads it now 14 to 3. Here we see it again. Yeah, the, you're exactly right. Chase comes up and when you do make that blitz, you're going to leave that gap open and you've got to get those other guys there just a little bit quicker. Well, again, fans, we want to remind you coming up near the end of the game, we'll present our Northwestern Energy players of the game, Northwestern Energy delivering a bright future. There's a look at the MontanaGrizzlies.com scoring drive. Just the two plays in 37 seconds. Chase Reynolds, the six-yard touchdown run. And for news and stats on all Grizzly athletics, log on to MontanaGrizzlies.com. Right, for Montana fans here today, they really had to just breathe a sigh of relief because if you've not played very well and you're still up 14 to three with all that's gone wrong for Montana on offense, they look at the scoreboard and they're up 14 to three. You said it, Grady. 186 yards of total offense for the Bobcats to just 80 for the Grizzlies, but a special teams touchdown and some big plays on defense have the Grizzlies leading this game by 11. And now here with just over four minutes to play is a key part of the game. During the week, Rob Ash had talked about the keys for his team this week were gonna be to weather the storm right out of the gates, not get scored on a couple times early in the first quarter, and then the final five minutes of the first half was when he had seen the Grizzlies on tape really dismantle some teams. Well, I think that's a, that's been a long tradition here in Montana is they've always finished off the half very strong. As Aaron Mason is stopped at the 21-yard line, back down to Derek Berkeley on the sidelines. All right, guys, there's another game going on in the Big Sky Conference that at least Grizz fans have a good close eye on. You already mentioned Eastern Washington had a 14 nothing lead. Another announcement, it's now 14-7 Eastern Washington still leading that game. And that's huge because obviously the Grizz can continue that 11-season streak of Big Sky Conference championships. But really, the Big Sky has been dominated by the teams in the Big Sky country. In the 45 years of the conference, either the Cats or Grizz have won the championship 24 of the 45 years, guys. Thank you, Derek. First and 10 now for the Bobcats. As Desson hands for Crawford, spins off tacklers, and then is stood up. Brandon Fisher comes up to make the stop. No gain on the play. Well, and this is where I tell you what, you really, if you're Montana State, you're Mark Desson, this is where you've got to make a couple throws because, I mean, it is the Grizzly defense now can just sit on that run and until Mark Desson, he did make the one throw up the sideline, but you've got to make enough throws just to keep that Grizzly defense honest. As the game wears on, they're going to really start sitting in on that Crawford run. Yeah, we talked about it earlier is that, you know, the Grizzlies definitely want to take that away and make Desson throw the football. There you see him, he does deliver, go ahead and does, delivers a strike to Ty Lule to go ahead and pick up the first down. But I think you're absolutely right. If you're that, you're a Grizzly defensive coordinator, you've got to say, hey, you know, this kid, we knew he could throw the ball in high school. We haven't seen him throw it this year. Uh, you know, two weeks ago, he's still a wide receiver and he's not, doesn't have just the time, the practice. He hasn't thrown these routes all year like you would normally have a quarterback. So it is going to be difficult for him to get that rhythm going. Well, and you see the obvious skills that he does possess right there. That was a great ball, steps up in the pocket and just zips the out route. Speaking of stepping up in the pocket, Desson just did that. Second and 10, or second and 10 coming up now after the incompletion as he tried to thread it in back to Lule. Well, and he was such a great quarterback in high school for Billings Senior. I mean, just a terrific player. It reminded everybody, of course, of the great Dave Dickinson, and everybody thought that he might go on and have that same type of career. Montana State chose to move him to receiver, but he's getting his chance here to play the quarterback position and doing very well so far. Over 9,000 passing yards in high school for Desson at Billings Senior. And a number of fumbles. Crawford comes to the, coughs it up. Jace Palmer recovers for the Grizzlies. 
Another huge play by Montana's defense, but really it's just a bad play and bad execution by Montana State's offense. And again, Mike, I don't, I don't even know. We're up in the booth here. It's hard to describe this game because Montana State has really dominated it in a lot of, in a lot of ways, and yet it's 14 to three, and now Montana has a chance to make it even a bigger lead at halftime. Yeah, you know, it, it, it is very strange in that regard. But you know, here the Cats, you've got to come in here and not. Uh, make these silly mistakes and just execute your game plan here now we've they've given the Grizz three short fields consecutively on really just what have been unforced errors Montana offense takes over 248 to play in the half looking to tech a few more points on before they head into the locker room here's Chase Reynolds over the left side and stopped by Bobby Daly no game Great job by the senior co-captain. It seems like he's been playing in this game forever. You can see him, watch him come up from the bottom of your screen here. Just a, just a great linebacker play. He reads it, sees the hole, comes up, fills, good solid tackle. He has just been a great, great player for the Bobcats, and they will miss him. And it's unfortunate that he suffered the injury that he has been dealing with the last few weeks, Mike, because he was taken off the Buck Buchanan watch list. Uh, definitely deserves to be on there. He's had such a fantastic career. You can see what kind of a player he is. So fundamentally sound, such great technique. You see it right there. Just unfortunate that he's had to deal with that injury. Yeah, it really is. And I think, you know, a lot of times with those national type awards, you know, stats play such a big part in that. And obviously with the injury he's had this year, uh, isn't showing up. Those numbers aren't showing up like they have in the past for him. Still the second time all time uh, leader in tackles within the Big Sky Conference. Uh, he'll go out, finish that way. He's got a, uh, he'd have to have a heck of a day to catch his linebacker coach Kane Ione on that list. Uh, I don't think they run enough plays to get to where Kane was, but uh, just a great player, has had a great career. And uh, it's great to see him come back from the injury and be able to participate. Seven yards on second down for Reynolds brings up third and three. Play action for Burquist. Unloads for the end zone. And it's thrown out of bounds. Mark Mariani was the intended receiver. No way he was going to track that one down. And here comes fourth down. Just a play action fake right there. Montana keeping max protection, really running a three man route and trying to just get Mariani one on one on the corner with kind of a deep comeback route. But Montana State once again is able to get some late pressure on Cole and just force the errant throw. Brody McKnight lines up for what would be a 37 yard field goal. His long this season, 46 yards. Purdue transfer. Here's the fake. Jeff Larson running for what would have been first down yardage had he not been stopped a yard short. So the Bobcats sniff it out, stop it, and the Grizzlies turn it over on downs. Well, it, this is a pretty bold call. It, 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 you know, obviously, if you make it, you've got a chance to put a defense that's played great all half down you know with a uh, 21 point 21 to 3 almost really just rip your hearts out here if they get that thing but the Bobcat defense they did sniff it out they were able to stop it and now they've got to try and get something here in the last minute three hopefully maybe get on the board with another three possibly a seven but you know they've had such a good performance but they've made silly mistakes that have really cost them Bobcats get the ball back with a minute 03 to go in the half. Both teams still with their full allotment of three timeouts. Crawford gets the handoff on first down, tripped in the backfield and stopped for a loss. Well, I'm imagining right now, if I'm Coach Ash, uh, it looks like he's going to be obviously just content to run this first half out and get into the locker room. I bet he's excited to talk to his team, Mike, because when you look at this first half statistically, you look at really how you played. My goodness, you, you've got to just, you want to go just beg your team to clean things up and, and play as good as you can play because you've dominated this first half. Who cares if you're down 14 to three, rally your troops and, and let them know they got such a great chance in the second half. Crawford once again, no gain on second down as the clock ticks down below 20 seconds. And as you said, Grady, it appears that will be the final play of the first half. So Bobby Houck's Grizzlies 
able to manage 14 points on not much production from their offense. They lead it 14 to three. Going into the locker room here in Missoula, the 108th meeting between the Bobcats and Grizzlies. Derek Berkeley tracking down the copper clad Coach Houck on the sides. You know, ladies and gentlemen, the bottle of canned beverages served in today's game are 100 all right, Coach, this first half, the Cats dominating in total yardage, but why is this team still able to take the lead when, you, when you've been not able to move the ball? We've got more points than they do, Derek. It's not a total yardage game. It's about getting points on the board and getting more than they do. Demetrius Crawford with a great first half. What do you got to do to stop him in the second? He had one good run, you know. Uh, it was a nice run. Uh, you know, we've done a pretty good job other than that one play. All right, what do you tell him at halftime? Well, the goal line stand was about as good as we've had around here. Our punt return team's got him rattled. We'll hopefully keep that up. And uh, we got we got a lot of football left, you know. It's a good, good first half. We're glad to be up 14-3. All right, that's a good color on you, Coach. Good luck in the second half. We'll be right back after this, guys. Thank you, Derek. Coach Houck's special teams unit producing a touchdown, and the Grizzlies lead it 14-3 at the half. It's halftime at the D.A. Davidson Big Sky Classic. Stay tuned. The second half of Grizzly Gridiron Classics starts now. Start of the second half here at Washington Grizzly Stadium in Missoula, where the Montana Grizzlies, ranked fifth in the nation, lead their cross-state rivals, the Bobcats, by a score of 14 to three. Again, folks, Phil Buck, Grady Bennett, Mike Callahan up here in the booth, Amanda Maynard and Derek Berkeley down on the sidelines. The Bobcats wearing all white will get the ball to start the third quarter. The Grizzlies in their throwback copper and gold unis will kick off. Well, and quite a surprise by uh, the Grizzlies coming out in the throwback unis back to the copper, gold, and silver. And it's been, uh, it's almost been surreal for me, Phil, because as I see them run out on the field, you know, it's been such a long time since I've seen the Grizzlies in these colors. It's almost like I'm seeing my old teammates and I see the numbers and I start identifying all those guys that I played with back in the late 80s, early 90s. As we start the second half, short kick from McKnight taken by Crawford at the 18 yard line, has the 20, the 30, the 40, Crawford, Dragged down from behind by McKnight, the kicker, but Demetrius Crawford with a big kickoff return into Montana territory. Once again, the Bobcats start with good field position. Yeah, and you can't say enough about this. You know, he's got already got a 100-yard returner uh, to his credit for a touchdown against Minnesota this year. Just does a great job, great blocking. There was a nice seam, and boy, uh, good play for that kicker to, to bring that down. I think when you're the uh, second leading rusher in the Big Sky Conference and you're having a career day, you, you can't be real happy about being drugged down by the kicker. <laughs> well, there was a penalty flagged on the Grizzlies on that kickoff offside, but after the huge return from Crawford, Rob Ash declines and the Bobcats take over first and 10 from the Montana 43. Oh, and Montana State has definitely won the field position battle. They have played really either close to midfield or on Montana's side of the field the entire first half. The only time they were backed up a little bit, Crawford ripped off the 84-yard run. So Montana State has enjoyed the field position battle, uh, except for their turnovers put them deep a little bit on defense. But they've come out in that uh, smelling like roses. So the only, the only thing that's not going well for Montana State is just simply that scoreboard right now. Crawford picks up two on first down before he's stopped by Jesse Carlson. A defensive tackle out of Billings West High School. Here's this wide receiver DeAndre Green on the outside, tried to make a move and gets inside the 40, stopped at the 39 yard line, a pickup of another two yards. Well, Grady, you and I are both had the same reaction to this play. You know, we talked about it in the first half where you've got a, a situation with a third and one. You've got to get up field. Again, here, I think, you know, they have a nice play. They've got a nice early block here, but they've got to get this thing up the field and get close to a first down or at least make it a little bit more manageable. That It's just you it, it lose the effect of it in trying to run side to side. Both teams have struggled mightily on third down today. The Grizzlies 0 of 7, Bobcats 1 of 7. Make it 1 of 8 as Desson 
cannot connect with Deion Tolliver, and that brings up fourth down. Here comes the punt unit for the Bobcats. Well, and Coach Ash going to make the right decision right here. He's in Montana territory at the 39. You might think he'd go for it. They might have a fake a thought here, but I think the right decision is to punt deep and pin Montana. Montana's offense has yet to really do anything, and your defense has played very well in the first half. So Coach Ash is going to try to back Montana up deep. And Eric Fisher uh, has done a great job of pinning opposing teams inside the 20, and this time looks like it's going to be just inside the 10. You know, finally a solid play in the special teams there. Mark Mariani, the fair catch at the 10. Now time for this week's Payne Financial Group, ensuring the future as we profile Montana State redshirt freshman Brad Smith, the 6'5", 228-pounder from Belgrade. He's played great on special teams, and because of injuries on the defensive front, has seen a lot more play time than anticipated at the beginning of the year. Heading into today's game, he's credited with 35 tackles, 9.5 for loss, and 3.5 sacks. That's advising clients on insurance, employee benefits, and surety products. Payne Financial Group, our knowledge, your advantage. Montana takes over with a first and 10 from the 10. They're almost on cue there. You, uh, you talked about uh, Smith and the great contributions he's made on special teams this year. Here we're going to see him come from the defensive end and make a great play out on defense. Well, and two years ago, Mike, I got uh, privileged to coach in the Mondak game, the Montana North Dakota All-Star game, and many, many players on that great Montana All-Star team that summer are playing on this Bobcat team, Dan Ogden being a guy that I coached in in uh, high school as well. But Brad Smith was unable to play because of an injury, and uh, we really missed him. He is a great, great player and going to be fantastic for Montana State. Berquist, five on the play clock. Bobcats come on the blitz. Chase Reynolds runs to the right side. Out across the 15 to the 16 yard line. Well, a good run play from Montana. You see number 31, the outside linebacker out of CMR, Chase Gazzaro. They continue to bring him with pressure, and they've been very effective with it all game long. Montana really has yet to adjust to that weak side outside linebacker coming, but Gazzaro has come in, brought a lot of pressure on Montana today, and caused a lot of problems in the backfield. Gazzaro, the junior linebacker out of CM Russell High School in Great Falls, a construction, engineering, and tech, technical major. Well, and how about this in the first half, guys? Both defenses getting it done on third downs. I believe Montana 0 for 7 on third downs, and Montana State 1 for 8. So total 1 for 15. Here's Montana, which really needs to get something going, obviously, with the third and four. They really need to convert this. Berquist has time, has Rob Schulte, and has a first down. Exactly what we needed. If you're a Montana fan, you've got to convert that. You can't afford to come out here and go three and out right away. And uh, what a great throw by Cole Berquist. From the hash, a quick out. Look at the zip he puts on that ball. It's got to be an accurate throw just on the quick flat route. And uh, good conversion by Cole in that Montana offense. Schulte, the senior out of Great Falls High School, has been a big time third down target for Cole Bergquist all season long and there comes through with a first down to set up with a new set of downs now at the 24. Reynolds. Positive yardage out to the 29 before he is stopped and the Grizzlies now with 11-11 to play in the third quarter have finally gone up over 100 yards of total offense. We mentioned state championships being decided out across the state today as well. There's your state A football championship. Miles Setti leads by a touchdown over Billings Central. Fairfield trails Huntley Project 14-7 in the second quarter in the state B championship. Weibo over Superior 14-6 at the half. That in the Class C eight-man championship as Bergquist tries to string this one out. And coming up is Jeff Price, the junior linebacker, the former walk-on, just drills Bergquist for no game. Yeah, this is a great defensive play. You can see the front does a great job of stringing this thing out. And then, as you said, Price comes up and makes a big hit to cap off the run. Well, and Bergquist is going to have to make a little better decision right there. He obviously decided there's nothing here. I'm just going to get to the sideline. But, boy, stay down, put your shoulder pads down, and understand Jeff Price is still going to come and lay a lick on you. There you see both teams abysmal so far on third down today. This is a third and eight for Bergquist out of the shotgun. 
three-man rush for the Bobcats. Bergquist threads it in. Rob Schulte was there, but could not hold on. Fourth down coming up. Well, Montana State, for one of the few times in this game, actually didn't bring any pressure. They're only going to rush three, and then Daly will come late. Reynolds picks him up. Ball is thrown well into the hole, but that's a play that Rob Schulte just simply has to make, and he knows it. He's going to hit the ground in disgust. He knows he's got to make that catch for his team to move the chains and keep the drive going. The Bobcats figure to get another drive started with good field position. Ty Lule stands at his own 34. Ken Wood just got the punt off, it appeared, and takes a Montana State bounce at the 40. That's where the Bobcats will take over when we come back 14 to 3. Chris with the lead. Mark Desson and the Bobcat offense take over with a first and 10 from their own 43. Demetrius Crawford to his left. Crawford with 149 rushing yards so far today. The play fake to Crawford. Desson steps up, evades the tacklers, picks up about seven yards before he stopped. Sean Lebsock coming up to make the tackle for the Grizzlies. Well, this is actually what you want to see out of your quarterback. Stay with the timing of the play. A lot of quarterbacks will sit in the pocket too long, and if the coverage is there, it, that's what becomes a coverage sack. But he takes his drop, nothing there, step up and go. If nothing's there, go. Make something out of the play. So a nice decision by Mark Desson, and that's what he can do with his feet. Picks up six yards, gives his team a very manageable second down and four. Crawford dots the eye on second down, gets it, and runs into the Grizzly linebacking core. Tyler Corwin was there to stop him a couple yards short of a first down. Well, if you're a defensive football player, this is how you fill a hole right here. Watch the safety, Shan Schillinger, and watch Tyler Corwin, the linebacker. This is a big hole. Once again, Montana State, look at the job they do up front. A little power play, going to lead the fullback and pull the backside guard around. It's a nice hole, but Tyler Corwin and Shan Schillinger fill it nicely. Another third down, this time third and two. Montana State one of eight so far today on third down. Desson hit as he throws and it's incomplete. Chase Palmer got home to put a lick on Desson and that brings up fourth down. Well, just like Montana State has done such a good job of getting pressure, especially on third downs, Montana has also done the same. And what looked like a, a good first play by Montana State there, looked like they were going to get that ball moving. Montana's defense, again, shows how stingy they are. And the pressure by Jace Palmer off the edge forces Desson to throw it quickly and errantly. And Montana's going to get the ball back. Mark Mariani. Took a punt back 75 yards for a touchdown in the first quarter. He's back to receive this one. Caught at the 16, switches direction. And is caught from behind. I believe that it was Kevin Rattoriano that made the tackle. Grizzlies have the ball when we come back. The Montana State defense ranked first in the Big Sky Conference in total defense and have certainly had the Grizzlies number so far today. Just 105 total yards of offense for the Grizzlies so far and we're almost midway through the third quarter. Well, and all you can do is give those guys credit. They have played so well as a unit and after well, there's another drop pass, Phil, too. We saw last week so uncharacteristic of this Montana receiving crew. They dropped two or three last week, and we've seen now two drop passes. And you got to feel for Cole Berquist a little bit. Last week was one of his poorer games of his career, only two for 77 yards and feeling a little bit down, obviously wanting to play a lot better today. But thus far, within in three quarters, Cole has only thrown for 47 yards and just really struggling to get it going through the air is Montana. Reynolds the back, two tight ends to the left. That's where he goes, and nothing there. Price comes up to make another tackle. 
Boy, those Montana State linebackers are good, Mike. They are just good football players. We all, everybody knows how good Bobby Daly is, but how about those two guys on the edge? Mike Price has played very well today. Chase Cazero flying around out there. Just good linebacker play for the Bobcats out of those three today. They really have, and you can see where they're, they're stepping and filling those holes, but I think any linebacker is going to tell you, if they're being honest, that those opportunities are created by those men up front keeping people off you, and they, uh, that front line has done an excellent job of protecting those linebackers today. Third and ten for Burquist out of the shotgun. Has time, steps up and hit as he throws. Gazzaro was there to put the lick on Burquist. It's ruled incomplete. And the third down struggles continue for the Grizzlies. They'll have to punt it away. Well, and from, sorry, Mike, from the beginning of the play, you saw Rittoriano, the strong safety, slide up into the box. So you knew that he was going to bring some pressure. Cole doesn't get rid of the ball early enough. When you know they're going to bring pressure, the ball's got to get out of there a little bit quicker. And sure enough, Rittoriano with the big hit. Actually, that was Chase Gazzaro once again. Ty Lule stands at the Montana State 40. Ken Wood the freshman punter out of University High School in Spokane back in his own 10 and I think I think this one was partially blocked it takes a Montana bounce across the 45 it'll be down at the 48 nonetheless it's going to be a holding call in Montana and I thought the last couple times Rotoriano has been very close to blocking this and I thought that it had been close to, to holding calls as well and the last time after he almost blocked it he actually talked to the ref and I think told him hey they're holding me really bad. One thing to watch is Mike you mentioned this in the last break look how long Ken Wood is holding onto this football. I mean he catches it and it seems like just taking forever to actually get the punt off and uh, Kevin Rotoriano is too good you got to get the ball out of there a little bit quicker. Holding, kicking team, number 47, 10-yard penalty will be assessed at the end of the kick, first down. Severin Campbell, the sophomore out of Denver, Colorado, flagged for the hold. And so once again, the Bobcats start a drive in Montana territory. You know, you've got it. Well, we still got a ton of football left to play. You know, when this is your third drive where you've, of the second half where you've started a great field position, at some point, you've got to wonder how many more opportunities you're going to get. You've got to go and turn one of these into some points. Well, and what's crazy, Mike, credit to both defenses, really, and how well both defenses have played because if you looked at average starting field position for both teams, Montana has been backed up a little bit, but they also got the three turnovers deep in Montana State territory where they were unable to do anything with them. So if you looked at average starting field position for both teams, man, you got to give these defenses a ton of credit. They have played so well with their backs against the wall in bad situations, after turnovers, after bad punts, whatever, and both defenses have just risen up to the challenge and turn the offenses away. They really have, and you can see why, you know, coming into this game, these were the, the number one and number two defenses and total defense in the league, and they have both lived up to that billing today. Bobcats with a first and 10 now from the 38 after the penalty. Desson out of the shotgun, hands to Crawford. He picks up maybe two before he runs into Mike Stadnick. Well, the senior defensive end out of Regina, Saskatchewan. And that's a better play by Mike Stadnick from the defensive end. On this decide zone, what the quarterback is going to do, you'll watch Desson, he's going to read the end. And if the end chases the run, he's going to keep the ball. So Stadnick's got to keep his shoulders square and just work down the line of scrimmage. And uh, Desson hasn't kept it yet. So squeeze to that football and make the tackle on Crawford. Nice play right there by Stadnick. Four targets split wide for Desson on second and seven. And off the play action, runs it right up the gut. Positive yardage down to the 31. That'll set up a third and short. And this is a little tackle play. It comes off of that decide zone. Desson's going to fake to Crawford like it's decide zone. And then you'll watch the, the quick side tackle is going to come around right there, number 75. And Desson's going to follow him up into the hole. And again, Montana State with another third and short. They have failed to convert on their last few third and shorts. We'll see what they call right here. They need three. Crawford will get it. Cuts it back. Has a first down and coughs it up. The fumble comes out at the 26. 
Well, I think very fortunately for the Bobcats, we're going to see uh, Joe Schreibeis come down and get on this ball. But, boy, again, I mean, you talk about a potential blow and just a great opportunity down here. One thing I do like about this play is that, you know, the last couple times on, on third and short, they've tried to throw the ball and been pretty ineffective. I think when you've got a back like Crawford, you give him an opportunity to go get that first down. That was Shan Schillinger, the junior safety, coming up to force the fumble. He has emerged as a big-time playmaker on this Montana defense this year. First and 10 from the 27. Play fake to Crawford. Desson trying to buy himself some time. And he improvs nearly. Had Ty Lule at the five yard line instead. It's an incomplete pass. Well, and that's what Mark Desson can do. Exactly what he brings to the table. The ability to run around and improvise, as you said, Phil, and make some crazy things happen. And another thing that it does is it really puts a lot of pressure on your defensive line to chase him around because he's going to go left, he's going to go right, he's going to end up running maybe 50, 60 yards, and you've got to pursue that whole time. And what it does is it wears you down as the game goes on in the running game is when, as a defensive lineman, you get tired chasing that quarterback around and then puts you a stop in the run. Mason and Crawford in the backfield. And they run the option. Desson stopped short. Brandon Fisher, the sophomore linebacker from Nashville, Tennessee, comes up to make the stop for a loss. Well, we talked, I think, I don't know uh, if we were on the air, that we might see some of this option today when they go with this two-back set here. Here you see the Grizzlies just do a great job they had. Schillinger was outside on the pitch. There was no choice for him. Just a, a great assignment defensive play for the Grizzlies. Brings up third and long. The Bobcats two of ten so far today on third downs. Desson four of 12 for 51 yards. Empty backfield. Five split wide. Desson steps up in the pocket, and he's picked off. Shen Schillinger with his fourth pick of the year. Well, once again, Mike, we talked about it at the start of this drive. How many times have these defenses for both sides come out with their backs against the wall in, in bad field position or after bad happenings to their football team and just stood the test and turned the offenses away. Montana does it once more right here, and Shan Schillinger is simply playing great football. Last week has two interceptions, could have had a third. It was nullified by a penalty, but what a great job Schillinger just jumping in the way of that Mark Desson pass and giving the ball back to his offense. Grizzlies take over the first and 10 from their own 29. Bergquist. The fade for Ferreter, who goes up to make the grab. Mike Ferreter, 6'1", 210 pounds, the senior out of Helena High School. Well, what a fantastic job of concentrating by Mike Ferreter. He knows that the strong safety is going to come over and give him a look. Watch the job he does of reaching up high with his hands at the end of this play. He knows he's going to take a shot from the safety right there, but he still goes and gets it with his hands, extends his body, sacrifices for the team, and makes the big play. 28 yards on the completion to Ferreter. Bergquist passing again this time. Swings it out to his tight end, Dan Bowden, the junior out of Knoxon. Gain of five on the play inside the 40 down to the 39. And you can see Bowden kind of looking around out there like, okay, what line did I trip on? Was it the number? Was it the hash? But a good quick play by Montana. That's what I think Cole Burquist needs to do is get the ball out of, the, out of his hand a little bit quicker. Montana State has brought a lot of pressure. Get it out of there early enough that you frustrate that pressure because they can't get to you. Andrew Schmidt takes the handoff for about a yard. Yeah, you can see if you watch here on the replay, it looked uh, very similar to play we saw earlier. Brad Smith from his right defensive end just does a nice job of following this down the line, getting loose and making the play there to, to stop the Grizzlies. Smith, the redshirt freshman out of Belgrade, making the stop to bring up third and four. Montana one of 10 so far today on third down. And this is where both defenses have really stood out and done a great job is on third downs. Burquist 
Airs it out for Mariani. Drops it in. Touchdown. Mariani, what a great play. Simply a one-on-one -on -one matchup. And you can see right now, he's down on the turf. A lot of times on a play like that, as the defensive back tackles you, he falls down on the back of your legs, your ankles, and sometimes you'll get a, a bad twist out of that. We'll hope, of course, Montana fans will hold their breath and hope that he's not injured too severely. But great protection by Montana, the backs and offensive linemen. And you see, yeah, right there. A lot of times that turns into a high ankle sprain as the uh, DB will kind of fall on the back of your ankles to bring you down. See if he's putting any pressure on that. It looks not much, and that is not good news for Montana Grizzly football fans. No, not at all. I mean, you love the touchdown, but you'd give the touchdown back if you could have that kid with you for the rest of this campaign for those guys. He's just been a great playmaker for the Grizzlies really all year long. He just comes up with the big play, and there you see it. On that play again, but I think the Grizzlies knew they were going to get that man coverage, and they went to their guy who makes the play. Mariani, the junior from Haver, with his 14th receiving touchdown of the year. That leads the Big Sky Conference. Welcome back, everybody. 2.51 to play here in the third quarter. In the 108th meeting between the Bobcats and the Grizzlies, we want to remind you coming up near the end of the game, we'll present our Northwestern Energy players of the game. Northwestern Energy delivering a bright future. The Grizzlies scoring their third touchdown of the day on the 37-yard completion from Cole Bergquist to Mark Mariani, but at what cost as Mariani who's provided so much electricity for these Grizzlies all season long, had to be helped off the field. Crawford stopped by Tony Kazmerzak at the 24-yard line. That's where the Bobcats will take over. There's your MontanaGrizzlies.com scoring drive. Four plays, 71 yards. The 37-yard hookup from Bergquist to Mariani for the touchdown. And for news and stats on all Grizzly athletics, log on to MontanaGrizzlies.com. Oh, and it's a big touchdown because it gives you a little bit of breathing room now. You haven't played that well on offense, but you're up now 21 to 3. And the announcer continues to announce the score down in, in Weber. Weber State losing 27 to 7. Montana now has to smell with going into this fourth quarter the fact that they may have a shot at their 11th straight Big Sky Championship. Crawford gets the handoff on first down, spits off a hit from Colt Anderson and picks up seven. You talked about the announcing the score in Ogden. That cheer was not for this game. It was for yet again another score getting announced. Eastern Washington with a healthy lead now on Weber State. Player shaken up is Brandon Fisher. And Fisher has been another big play guy for the Grizzlies this year on defense. The sophomore out of Nashville, Tennessee. His father is Jeff Fisher, the head coach of the Tennessee Titans. And uh, not a good sign when you're starting one of your starting linebackers is down. No, and I believe his dad is in attendance today. And uh, I'm sure he's a uh Heart skipping a few beats right now. You hope this young man can get up, and it appears he is going to get up, get off field on his own power. So I'm sure we'll see him again. Well, and you know Montana State has been so banged up. They've had so many injuries this year in the past three or four weeks, especially. And now as Montana looks to head into the playoffs, and uh, he keeps hearing that score, and, and looks at maybe winning their 11th straight Big Sky title, and looks at maybe improving their playoff seed. Now they don't want to get the injury bug. You don't definitely don't want to go into the playoffs with, with a bunch of starters out with injuries. Crawford sheds one tackle, picks up a couple after the initial contact, still stopped about two yards short of first down yardage. Well, you see Mike Stadnick again from his defensive end position. We saw Brad Smith do it so well for Montana State. This time it's Mon Mike Stadnick from Montana. Worked down the line of scrimmage. But boy, Demetrius Crawford is a tough running back to get down on first contact. Brings up a third and short for the Bobcats. Desson out of the shotgun, Aaron Mason to his left in the backfield. Desson to throw. Grizzlies bring the blitz. 
Gesson has the corner and runs for the first down. And then he's knocked out of bounds. Keith Thompson will be flagged for a personal foul on the end of the play. Yeah, well, this is, you know, you talked about Mark Desson. He brings out one dimension as he's got those feet. He had to get out of that pocket earlier because Colt Anderson was coming for him. You see he chases him all the way here. And this is a little bit tough at the end, I think. He was trying to pull up, maybe chest him up a little bit. But Yeah, it kind of looked like Desson almost coaxed that one out of him. After the play was over, bit. personal foul, late hit out of bounds. Defense, number 21. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. You kind of see at the very end of the play, Mark Desson actually, when he goes out of bounds, kind of was going to throw a little shoulder into Thompson right here. Watch at the very end. See, he kind of throws the shoulder that knocks himself down almost and kind of coaxes it out of him, out of the referee. But, hey, credit Mark Desson for doing that. Good thinking. Gets 15 more yards tacked on. There's a blitz where Colt Anderson comes free, and Desson makes him miss, runs for a first down, and then gets 15 more yards tacked on. Great play by Mark Desson. Here's Desson throwing on first down. Out to Lule. Stopped by Thompson at the 40. Pickup of nine. That'll bring up second and one. Back down to Derek Berkeley. All right, guys. Well, the Grizzlies obviously need a win if they want to win the Big Sky Championship, but it's also much more important to their playoff positioning. Only the top four teams get seeded in the FCS playoffs, and they get guaranteed at least two home playoff games. The Grizz this week ranked fifth in the FCS poll, so they're right on that edge of getting one of those top four seeds. A win today would go a long ways to getting them one, guys. Nice mittens, Derek. Here's C.J. Palmer, stop for a loss. Oh, I'll tell you what, I think Colt Anderson was a little upset. In fact, I'm going to say he was very upset at himself for coming free into the backfield on the last strong safety blitz and missing Mark Desson and giving up a big first down. He fills this hole very nicely to make up for that play. What a great job. Look, Colt Anderson right there into the Montana State backfield, wraps up the legs, a textbook tackle and fill by a safety. And with that, the third quarter's in the books in Missoula. 15 minutes to play. The fifth-ranked Grizzlies lead it 21-3. Get ready for the fourth quarter on Grizzly Gridiron Classics. 21-3, Grizzlies, as we start the fourth quarter in Missoula, Phil Buck, Grady Bennett, Mike Callahan in the booth, Derek Berkeley, Amanda Maynard on the sidelines. Third and two for the Bobcats and Mark Desson. Both teams have struggled mightily on third down so far today as Desson changes the play. Four split wide. Quick drop, slings it out for Tolliver who cannot reel it in. When I think Desson changed the play right there, he saw the blitz coming. He tries to go to just a little quick out. Good call by Mark Desson. You're going to get one-on-one. -on -one. You're going to throw a quick out, out to the outside, try to convert the first down. But unfortunately for Bobcat fans and for his teammates, he just misses, throws the ball behind the wide receiver and a little bit high, and Montana State is going to have to punt the football again. His third down continues to be a uncomfortable place to be for both teams today. Rob Schulte stands at his own 10-yard line to return this punt. Mark Mariani, again, if you're just joining us, had to leave the games with what looked to be an ankle injury, and this takes a Montana State bounce. Kevin Vittoriano downs it at the one-yard line, and with that, let's take a look at our other. Payne Financial Group ensuring the future for the Grizzlies, we uh, feature freshman Charles Burton, 6'5", 315 pounds, the offensive lineman from Long Beach, California. He's seen significant time on special teams and some filling in on the offensive line this season. Head coach Bobby Houck says Burton is a big athlete with a lot of power and he can pull. Again, advising clients on insurance, employee benefits and surety products, Payne Financial Group, our knowledge, your advantage. Montana begins this drive back up against their own end zone. First and ten from the two. Chase Reynolds buying his offense a bit of room. Still on his feet across the ten. Reynolds fights his way out to near the 11-yard line. One of the most impressive things that I think 
I really am starting to like and respect about Chase Reynolds is I think the more carries he gets, the stronger he gets. The, the longer he goes in the game, the tougher runner he becomes. It's a quality that very few backs have, but the great ones have it. Look at him. I mean, as this fourth quarter draws near and the game starts to come to a close, Chase Reynolds just gets better and better. And when you've got a big offensive line like Montana has, it's exactly what Bobby Houck wants out of his team. Start feeding the rock to a strong running back behind a good offensive line. That time, however, Bobby Daly with a great play on second down, filling the hole. Back to Amanda, Bear, Amanda Maynard. After a devastating loss to Eastern Washington earlier this season, the Cats have said the only thing that has kept them going is a slim hope of making the playoffs. However, they need this win for even a shot at that. However, the Cats this season are 0-4 when trailing in the third quarter. Thank you, Amanda. Third and two coming up for the Grizzlies. We've talked about the struggles on third down. Montana just two of 11 so far today. Dan Bowden, the man in motion. They'll give it to Reynolds, lowers the shoulder and picks up a first down. Well, that time you see no pulling offensive lineman, no misdirection, just simply a straight ahead power run, which is what I think the doctor ordered right there. Just the zone play, not gonna worry about pulling anybody, risking any penetration into your backfield, just run it straight ahead. Power on power, big on big. Good play by uh, play call by Coach Fennessy and gets the needed yardage. And after going two for 11 for the day, that was a much needed third down conversion. 63 yards and a touchdown so far today for Chase Reynolds. Play fake to Reynolds. Burke was forced out of the pocket. And just has to run it out of bounds. I think he got back to the original line of scrimmage. He did. Well, the key there for Montana State was stopping the clock. What Montana wants to do here, uh, no matter how far they get on the drive, obviously they would love to take all this clock off and run it all the way down the field and get another touchdown. But even if you don't move the ball that far, you want to really try to milk this clock right now. So the fact that Cole Burkus went out of bounds right there and stops the clock is, is a big play. Brings up a second and 10. Reynolds, the lone bat. Gets his 20th carry of the day. Out across the 20 before well, he's tripped up from behind. And another nice run there by uh, the Chase Reynolds, who's just done a great job all day. Bringing up a really big, you know, you talk about the clock is clearly a factor, but this is a huge third down and getting the Bobcats uh, another opportunity to get the ball and hopefully get some points in the bar. It looks like we've got somebody down. A Bobcat is down on the field. Well, I think uh, it's Dan Ogden, Mike. I think uh, Dan Ogden out of Flathead High School. Uh, great player. Not sure yet, but I know he's been dealing with that injured ankle. And uh, Danny was such a great player coming out of Flathead. And hopefully he's okay. Injury timeout. The Bobcat shaken up on the play was Dan Ogden, the sophomore out of Flathead High School. One of your old players, Grady, but he was able to leave the field under his own power. That brings up third and three now for the Montana offense. Two tight ends to the right. Bergquist looking to throw. Pocket collapses and he dumps it off for Dan Bowden. Evades one tackler and Bowden across the 30 to pick up a first down. That is a huge play right there by Cole Bergquist. Much needed conversion to, again, keep that clock running here in the fourth quarter. They really have suffered on third downs today, have not done a good job. But on this drive, when it really starts to matter as the fourth quarter wears down here, two conversions now in a row on third down. That's good, efficient play out of your quarterback, making the plays that you have to make. And again, Cole has not had a great day. Again, after last week, wanting to bounce back. It still hasn't been a, a fantastic day for him. But those are the kind of plays that your senior leader, your quarterback, who's been your guy now for so long in this program, those are the kind of plays that he needs to make. You're exactly right, and that's really been the difference this second half is that the Grizzlies have been making those plays and the Bobcats have not. Burke was taking it himself and picks up one on the quarterback keeper out to the 33, and the clock will continue to run. When we talked about Bowden, the junior tight end out of Knoxon. When you come from a small school like Knoxon High School, it's 
no rarity to see guys playing multiple sports. It is, however, a rarity to see it at the collegiate level, especially here, like at the University of Montana. However, Bowden last year, not only did he play tight end for the Grizzlies, he also came on to help out with the basketball team when they had some big guys go down, helped out in the post there. He also competed for the Grizzlies in track and field. He took second at the Big Sky Conference meet in the discus. Well, just a tremendous athlete. You can even tell just going in motion right there. Here he comes around on a little trap block and penetration by Montana State. But yeah, Bowden, a terrific, terrific athlete. And uh, Montana State now has done a good job of forcing a third and long. Montana has converted the last two third downs. We'll see if they can now convert a little bit longer third down, third and eight. And Montana State's defense, which has played so well today, just, just played a fantastic game. This, this is really crunch time for them, though. They need to get a stop right yeah, here. Absolutely. They they really can't afford to have this this drive continue for the Grizzlies. Not because they're moving the ball that well, but they are just taking a lot of time off that clock. Montana, after struggling mightily on third down for must, much, of the, much of the game, have converted their last three straight. Bergquist, all kinds of time, swings it out. Has Jabin Sembrano, the true freshman, at midfield, forced out of bounds at the Montana 49. Well, and you said it, Mike. There's the difference right there. Not to take anything away from Mark Desson because he's in a tough situation, and I really think he's done a fantastic job moving from receiver and stepping in there. But there's the difference in this football game, really, when it's all said and done, is Cole Burquist, the senior leader, the experienced leader, such e efficiency playing the quarterback position now. Three straight third down conversions when it's really needed most to put this game away. And again, great job by Cole Burquist. Burquist now 50% on the day, 9 of 18. Pardon me, more than 50%. 10 of 19. As Chase Reynolds goes over the left side and picks up three. Well, you can see this whole drive it's just been you know piece by piece it's i think this is the most impressive drive that the grizzlies have had today you know there haven't been many but it, the, the long strikes for the touchdown were great but this is just really when you get a team that needs to make something happen and you're just slowly picking and moving it down the field you take a lot of the life at them and you they've most importantly kept the bobcat offense off the field See the Grizzlies shuffling things. Andrew Schmidt and Chase Reynolds flanking Cole Burquist out of the shotgun. Burquist takes it himself, and flags come in on the end of the play. Burquist inside the 45-yard line, and we will check the penalty. Well, after my abysmal performance last week, Phil, I'm not even going to guess on what this might be. We'll just let the ref tell us, and then we'll go from there. How about that? I'd say that's probably a good course of action. <laughs> Holding, offense, number 84, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat, second down. Well, one thing about if Mariani, and depending on how badly he is hurt, it's going to be really important right here for Coach Houck to continue to throw the ball a little bit, just enough maybe to get some of those younger receivers uh, a couple reps in the passing game in a live situation, depending on Mariani, if he can come back or not next week to get some of those receivers ready to step in and fill in as they head into the playoffs. Derek Berkeley does have an injury update on Mark Mariani. We'll hear from him coming up after this play. Second and 15. Bobcats come on the blitz. Picked up well by Montana. Burquist dumps it off for Reynolds, who cannot hold on. Incomplete brings up third and 15. Well, you really have to credit the Montana State secondary, Mike, all day long. They have done a fantastic job of covering downfield, getting pressure on Cole, and, and really giving him nowhere to go. The only times that he's really had completions are when he's scrambled out like this and found somebody late. But initially in the passing game, there's been nothing for Cole Berquist. Again, Mark Mariani shaking up earlier. Derek, what do you got? Well, he is with his shoe off on the sideline right now. Looks like he can still put no weight on his left foot. They've got him up on the training table. They're taping what looks like maybe in the high ankle area like you guys were talking about on the tackle. So not looking good that Mark Mariani will come back today, guys. Not a good sign for the player that leads the Big Sky Conference in touchdown receptions as Rob Schulte makes the catch 
inside the 45, down near the 41, very close to a first down for the senior out of Great Falls. Great effort by Schulte to get it close, and Coach Houck's got a big decision right here. This, this is one of those, do I end the game right here? They've almost taken off, uh, well, over a third of this fourth quarter. On this drive, Montana has eaten up over a third of the clock, and Coach Houck right here is going to decide to either punt it deep or get this first down, and maybe this game's over right here. Yeah, I'm not so sure that he didn't get it to begin with. It's going to be very close, just a little, just a few inches short. But as you said, this you know this could put the dagger in the backs of the Bobcats' chances to come back, and they're just with this much time left, they're just not going to have enough opportunities to get enough points on the board. Well, and I think at this stage, the way your defense has been playing, and with a young quarterback in Mark Desson, I think you do go for it here, Coach Hauk leaving his offense on the field. You go for it right here. You've converted three third downs in a row now. So you, you finally got it going a little bit. Keep him out on the field. Get this first down and kind of make that statement that this game's over, boys. Third and inches for the Grizzlies. From the Montana State. Actually, fourth and inches for the Grizzlies from the Montana State 41. Berquist, the quarterback keeper, has enough for the first down. You know, an obvious call and just too much muscle, too much beef up front. Montana's going to tighten their splits up foot to foot, bring everybody down just in a wedge quarterback sneak. And again, just too much beef and too much strength. And it's good to see Dan Ogden, number 93, back in the game. Uh, didn't want to see his year in like that with an injury. Back in the game, finishing things up here. I tell you this, that defensive line for the Bobcats, they've all been battling. Uh, ankles, knees all year and, and really done a, a valiant job of, of holding it together and, and really uh, performing very well. well. This is an odd play. It appeared that Cole Burquist had possibly drawn the Bobcats offsides. Then they got the snap off. No flags came in. About half the players stayed where they were on the right side of the field. Mike Ferreter and Rob Schulte ran their full routes to the end zone, and Burquist could not hook up with Ferreter. Well, and what happens right here, this is an automatic snap by the center. If he if he sees that the defense has jumped off sides, he will snap it to draw him off, but the rest of the line won't move, and that's exactly happened. Chase Gazzaro jumps off sides, so the center sees that and snaps it. And even though Chase got back, the rest of the offensive line is thinking, well, we drew him off sides, so they just sit there, and it was kind of a bizarre-looking play. In the end, it's second and ten. Chase Reynolds spins out of a tackler to gain eight yards and set up another third and short for the Grizzlies. Back down to Amanda Maynard. As we saw just a little while ago, Dan Ogden coming off with an ankle injury, coming back just about two plays later. Thus has been the story with the D-line all season long. The unit has lost about three quarters of its starters to season-ending injuries. And Coach Bo Beck says he's continually surprised by the tenacity of the guys coming in to step up and take those plays. Even Ogden paraphrased it himself a little bit better earlier this week. He said they're fighting for tackles each week, even if they've got limbs missing. So, guys, back to you. On third and three, Reynolds has a first down over the left side. Well, and that is five straight conversions now on this drive. What an impressive drive, Phil. When you've really struggled all game long offensively to get anything going, you take over at the start of the fourth quarter. You've chewed up almost half of the minutes, over half of the minutes now, and you haven't converted all day on third downs, and now that is five straight, and you are just simply making a statement that we're going to win the Big Sky Championship for the 11th straight year. We're going to go into the playoffs with maybe one of the top four seeds. The Montana Grizzlies looking good finishing this game up today. Bowden, the man in motion. Reynolds again will get the carry. Has a block inside the 20. Finally dragged down from behind by Arnold Briggs, the sophomore out of San Diego, but another big run for Chase Reynolds and another first down for the Grizzlies. And, and give the Grizzly O-line credit for this drive. I mean, the, you can see the defensive line for the Bobcats are, are not getting the best of it right now. They look worn down and, and tired. The effort's there, but you know, you put a drive together like this where you've got them on the field for this long without a break, and it just gets awful tough. 5.44 to play. Grizzlies looking to close it out. 
Montana continues to run the clock here. 544 to play. The Grizzlies lead it 21 to 3 here in the 108th meeting between the Cats and Grizzlies. If you're just joining us, do not attempt to adjust your television set. Those are the old school copper and gold unis of the Montana Grizzlies. First and 10. Bergquist, the toss for Reynolds. Waiting for his blocks to set up and picks up maybe one. And again, fans, we want to remind you, DA Davidson and company are proud to support college academic excellence through its Scholar Athlete Award in Montana and the Davidson Student Investment Programs at both the University of Montana, Montana State University, as well as 18 other colleges and universities across our region. That's DA Davidson and company financial advice for the long run. Well, the Grizz now are obviously content just to let that clock run. Whether they end up getting a touchdown or just settling for three points really doesn't matter. They have done exactly what they needed to do. They've chewed up almost all of the fourth quarter and really have made it nearly impossible for Montana State to mount a comeback. Reynolds, touchdown! Chase Reynolds with another touchdown, his second of the day. Well, you know, we talked about the Grizzly running game struggling early on, uh, really offensively. But, you know, having a, and you talked in the open about how uh, he's made the loss of Lex Hilliard a little more bearable. But I'm telling you, I'm flashing back to last year when we had a very close game in Bozeman, and the Grizzlies came out in the third and fourth quarter and fed the Bobcats just a strong dose of Lex, Lex, Lex. And I think we're seeing a very similar uh, thing going on here. We just got a different number out there for the Grizzlies. Yeah, and that puts Chase over a hundred yards now for the fifth straight week. And you know what's funny, Phil, is I think when you do these Grizzly games every week, I think when the Grizzly offense struggles a little bit early, I think the fans panic, the fans get a little worried, the fans get restless, they're, they're not very happy with things. The one guy in this stadium that's not worried at all is Bobby Howe because what he wants is exactly what happened today. He wants to get to that fourth quarter with the lead and turn the game over to his offensive line. Just hand them the baton and say, all right, boys, go get it. And that's exactly what they've done today. What a great, great showing by the Montana offensive front. And again, when you've got a back like Chase Reynolds who gets stronger as the game goes on, gets better with more and more touches, uh, what, a, what a bonus, what a plus to put that game in their hands in the fourth quarter. Almost 10 minutes taken off the game clock on that drive. As you take a look at the MontanaGrizzlies.com scoring drive, 20 plays, 98 yards in 9 minutes, 56 seconds, capped off by the 15-yard touchdown run from Chase Reynolds, his second of the day. And for news and stats on all Grizzly athletics, log on to MontanaGrizzlies.com. Well, all you can do is credit that unit because, again, didn't play very well last week didn't play very well for three quarters but that right there is one of the best drives that montana has had on offense all season long and all you can do is give those kids credit for hanging in there brody mcknight's extra point is good and the grizzlies lead it by 25. the montana offensive line unheralded as they can be at times paving the way for a dominant drive in the fourth quarter there. As we said, 20 plays, 98 yards. The Grizzlies march there in just under 10 minutes to put a foot on the throat of the Bobcats seemingly here with just under five minutes to play. Aaron Mason takes this kick out to the 30-yard line where he's met by a swarm of Grizzlies. Well, and you can see the strategy there the last three times Montana has kicked off. They're just going to kind of pooch it up in the air, uh, kind of not too deep, but just down in, in the corner and not give the dangerous Crawford, who's had a couple big returns himself. Coach Houck obviously understands with Mariani's fantastic returns the last couple weeks, which have really turned the game around for his team. He does not want to give Crawford a chance with one touch to make this potentially a game. But Montana State has a lot of work to do now with under five minutes to play and down by four scores. Dessen has time, has Ty Lule out to the 39. Oh, very close to the 40 is where they will spot this ball and close to a first down. But, you know, this is a very nice play here. Dessen steps back and delivers the football like he needs to to get this thing done. I think that they 
for the Bobcats to, to move the ball effectively. You've just got to do that with more frequency, and I think it's a lot to ask of a young quarterback who two weeks ago was playing wide receiver to, to come into a situation and have to deliver uh, and execute perfectly in order to get his team in the end zone. Crawford out to the 47 to give the Bobcats a new set of downs. The clock continues to run just over four minutes to play. Montana State with just one timeout remaining. Here comes the blitz. Dessen with a nice dance move to get away. Buying himself some more time. Finally dumps it over the top and out of bounds. Well, you can see the incredible quickness of Mark Dessen. This has happened twice this game where the first time Colt Anderson comes free. Nobody blocks him on the blitz. This time it's going to be Tyler Corrin off the edge. Look at that. Nobody blocks him, but he can't break down and make the sack on Dessen so quick. And then Dessen here trying to dance around, keep himself alive, make a play. But, man, give that Montana secondary credit. They covered right there for about 10 seconds. Great job of covering. Dessen. As we mentioned, the Bobcats' third string quarterback at the start of the year has been forced into the starting lineup because of injuries to Mark Iddens and Cody Kemp. Got his first collegiate start last week against Portland State. This time keeps it and gets it back to the line of scrimmage. As they keep announcing the score in Ogden here, Weber State climbing their way back into that game against Eastern Washington. Eastern leads at 33-26 in the fourth quarter. Well, and there's only six minutes left, so you know Weber State has the talent to get back in it. They have gotten back in it now. Can they finish it? Montana at this point, obviously very interested in that score, but the key is, is they going to win this game today for sure, and now it's just simply what happens in Weber, and then it's up to the committee. Do they get one of those top four seeds? And it, you know, it's all up to the committee, which you can do nothing about. But the Grizzlies took care of their business today and uh, can't worry about anything else. Dessen incomplete to Tolliver on third down. That brings up fourth. And the Bobcats, it appears, will punt it away to Rob Schulte, who stands at the 15-yard line. When you saw Montana rushing their punt team out onto the field, and the reason they had to rush is because I think they, they felt like Montana State would go for it. When you're down 28 to 23, why would you punt it away? But Coach Ash obviously kind of conceding defeat at this point. And uh, instead of giving Montana the ball at midfield, going to punt it away. And this thing is pretty much in the books. Yeah, I think obviously you know, we make you can see from the decision that he knows this game is over. I think part of it, you gotta you got to support your defense a little bit. Those guys have done a heck of a job today with, with the exception of that last drive. And, you know, I don't think you want to give uh, the, the, the Grizzlies an opportunity at a short field, maybe put another one on you and, and make this thing look embarrassing. So the offense of Montana takes over with three minutes to play. Andrew Schmidt in a tailback for the Grizzlies, gets the handoff on first down and is stopped for no game. It was Bo Watkins coming up to make the stop. Another Flathead High School product. Another great young man. I had the privilege of coaching in Flathead's program. A couple of them on this team, Montana State, Bo Watkins, and Dan Ogden, of course, and proud of those guys and what they've done. And good to see Bo in the football game. But you really just cannot give enough credit today to both of these defenses. Both defenses played so well throughout the game. And uh, really, it was ultimately came down to Montana's offensive line and that running game in the end, making the statement and finishing the game off. Berkowitz on the quarterback keeper. No gain as he's tackled at the 10. Flags come in on the end of the play. Well, probably going to be a holding call, but kind of a surprising call at the end of the yeah, game to see Cole Berkowitz running the football. Yeah, I think uh, if, if, uh, if I'm uh, Coach Bobby Houck, I don't want to take a chance on getting him banged up, uh, you know, and being in the game to hand the ball off is one thing, but I don't think you want him moving up field against his Bobcat defense and taking a chance on getting a hit at this point in the game. Well, it looks like Montana's going to come out of this. Holding on the offense, number 72. The penalty is declined. Result of the play, third down. They're going to come out of this game fairly healthy. Obviously, the Mark Mariani injury will be something everybody's interested in seeing the results of because that could have a huge effect on their offense and their special teams as well. But uh, Brandon Fisher moved off the field successfully, and it, it looks like Montana is going to move into the playoffs very healthy. 
Bergquist. <laughs> flanked by Thomas Brooks, Fletcher, and Andrew Schmidt. Under two minutes to play. Here's third and seven. The draw for Thomas Brooks, Fletcher goes nowhere. Dan Ogden, once again, credit Dan Ogden for hanging in there. Injured as he was all day, you can see him jogging off the field right there, barely able to run, but comes up here. This is what Dan Ogden does so well. He's got such a knack for making plays, just reads things so well, understand, understands the offensive schemes, and, and right there just reads that draw play, understands that the linemen are setting him up for pass, but actually it's going to be a draw run and makes a nice play. Ken Wood on the punt from deep in his own end zone with just over a minute to play in the game. Well, watch Rotoriano, Kevin Rotoriano, number 27 off the left edge, bottom of your screen, has come so close three times now to blocking punts. Wood gets this one off. Ty Lule takes it at the Montana 46 and gets it down inside the 35. As we take a look at today's Northwestern Energy players of the game for the Montana State Bobcats, Demetrius Crawford. What a season he has had, capped off today with 25 carries for 174 yards. He averaged nearly seven yards a tote. For the Montana Grizzlies, the other running back we talked about at the top of the show, Chase Reynolds, 27 carries, 115 yards, and two touchdowns for the sophomore from Drummond. Those are your Northwestern Energy players of the game. Northwestern Energy delivering a bright future. Well, and once again, it kind of shows you what an odd game it was because we said that the running game would be the key in which defense could stop it. And really, both running backs had great games, but on the same time, both defenses played outstanding. That's yeah, they really did. And you can see, you know, the Bobcats now getting a few, uh, picking up some yardage, but I think, you know, obviously too little, too late. Had plenty of opportunities today. You know, they start the game. This could have been so different. Uh, small plays, small breaks in a football game, just uh, you, you don't really know it at the time, but all those opportunities early on in short field where they weren't able to convert and get points, it just it just takes that uh, sting a little bit harder to, to walk out of this thing. Here comes the blitz, and it's picked off by George Mercer, the junior from Libby, rumbling, stumbling, touchdown Montana! George Mercer had his first career sack last week against Idaho State. Here he takes his first career pick back for the six. Well, you talk about intelligent line play. George Mercer right here reads the quick screen, and instead of continuing to pursue Mark Dessen, he hesitates a little bit, knowing that it's screen, starts to retrace, which is what you teach the defensive line, retrace and start looking for screen. He does it, he jumps up, picks it off, and then look at the athleticism to get into the end zone. Demetrius Crawford gives chase all the way down, never gives up on the play, give him credit, but Mercer gets into the end zone, and it looks like Coach Houck got the bath. What a way to put an exclamation point on this ball game. The Grizzlies will back it up here on the extra point, flag for excessive celebration, but I don't think they mind. People are going to see this score. They're going to open papers. They're going to see tickers on the bottom of TV screens. They're going to see 35 to 3. And it was a great win for Montana, but it did not in any way resemble really how this game was played. This game was much closer than that score. But once again, Phil, two weeks in a row. Montana last week, 29 to 10. This week, 35 to 3. Both kind of weird games, both kind of ugly games in a sense. But as Coach Houck said at halftime, the only things that matter are those light bulbs on the scoreboard. Throw everything else away, and you are 35 to 3 winners. You have a chance. We'll see what happens down in Ogden, Utah, but a chance to win your 11th straight title and you're heading to the playoffs. Well, the Cats really hung in there in almost every statistical category. The two big ones that really stand out, pass yards, just 81 yards through the air and five turnovers for the Cats. Yeah, and I, it, those numbers are going to kill you in any game. And, and it just need to be more productive. The Bobcats have not been productive in the passing game really all season, but to expect that to come in a big game like this when again you've got your wide receiver playing quarterback it's just I think a tall order and obviously the Bobcats weren't up to it today. 
You'll see the replay right there as I talked about. Look at the job George Mercer did. He started to come on the rush, but he realizes that something's up because he's being unblocked, so he retraces. Great job with technique, great job of coaching by Coach Paulson. I know he coaches those defensive ends so well and has so well for so many years. And just retraces his steps, jumps up, picks it off, and then here's the wherewithal to make a very good athletic run all the way down the field and score the touchdown. Bobby Houck is pumped. And there's the big hug for George Mercer. 73-yard interception return for touchdown. Well, and you I see think all that may be that play may be just a, your visual definition of adding a, a insult to injury for the Bobcat fans today. To watch that big 92 lumber down the field, it's a it's a pretty helpless feeling, and that's been the feeling of the Bobcats for a lot today. Huge kick taken back to midfield. And Bobcats will take over seven seconds left in the ball game. Late flags come in on the end of the return. Well, and now Montana has got to be smart. You've got a team down 35 to 3. Don't get any any ejections or do anything stupid that's going to hurt you in the playoffs. You're moving on, so keep your head. After and be the play smart. was over, personal foul, number three of the receiving team, 15 yard penalty. It's Andrew Swink, the junior corner, flagged for the penalty. Actually, I think it was Mason. I think it was on Montana oh. State. Mason was a little upset, but you have to expect that right now. Montana State's going to lose the football game. They're not very happy. Uh, they have to feel like they played pretty well in certain areas, but this game really got away from them. And again, the scoreboard's going to look much worse than how they played today. Uh, so if you're Montana, again, just back up and don't do anything stupid to maybe hurt your team next week in the playoffs. Grizzlies in the prevent defense. The handoff for Crawford up the middle. This will pad his stats quite a bit. As Crawford across midfield in the Montana territory. Tackled from behind by Ryan Featherston. And that'll do it. The fifth ranked Montana Grizzlies knock off the Bobcats 35 to 3. And the Grizz are headed to the playoffs. Well, credit those Montana Grizzly football players for hanging in there. Their defense played outstanding today. Crawford gashed him pretty good and had a lot of yards running. But, you know, one of the differences, Mike, that I saw in the stats, Montana State's defense was number one in yards given up, and Montana's was number two. But one of the things that matters the most is points given up. In that category, Montana's number one at only 18 a game. Montana State's number six, I think, at, at 27 points a game. So really, the stat that matters, again, that scoreboard, Montana did get a great job today, maybe gave up some yards in the run game, but only three points on the scoreboard. Yeah, you know, we can we can say it over and over again. Coach Halkway in the, his quick interview before the halfway, I, I wondered if he was watching the same game that I watched the first half. He was absolutely correct that there is only one stat that matters, and that's uh, the number on the scoreboard that gives you the win or the, the loss, and the, the Grizz clearly took care of that number today. Well, there's Mary Annie Phil right there. Actually looks like he's walking okay, which is great news for the Grizzly team and fans. Obviously a little limp, but uh, if he's walking like that, you're hoping with maybe a week of rehab, he can be back and healthy next week for the playoffs. Bobby Houck grinning from ear to ear as he knocks off the Bobcats here in Missoula. And continues his success. The Montana Grizzlies now improve to 11 and 1 on the season, 7 and 1 in conference play, and will earn at least a share of this year's conference championship, depending on the outcome in Ogden. There's the Great Divide Trophy. Montana in their throwback unis. I love the decision. I love the unis today. All right, I'm here with a very happy and very wet Coach Houck. Uh, that fourth quarter, the offense really hadn't established anything, and then a 10-minute, 20-play drive. How'd you do it? You know, when the chips are down, we have a real tendency to, to go get it done. Uh, we ran the ball well. Uh, Jabin Sambrano had two big third-down catches. Uh, it, was a, it was a great drive. Obviously, uh, 
that salted it away, and then the icing on the cake was George Mercer. All right, tell me, this team last year, you went undefeated, went to the first round, and then things didn't go so well. What do you like about this year's team that you can make a further run in these playoffs? I don't know. I haven't thought about that yet. Well, enjoying this win, then, what does it mean to get a win over Montana State to you? Well, it's a great game. It's a rivalry game. You never want to lose it, and uh, it's a lopsided rivalry, and we like keeping it that way. All right, tell me, what did you like about the colors today, or did you did you like that idea? Well, I was, uh, you know, with the help of Mr. Jim Foley, uh, Jim Foley and I came up with that idea in June, believe it or not, and we kept it under wraps as best we could. And uh, like I said, Jim, Jim Foley in the president's office gave us the go ahead and helped us do it. And uh, I'm very pleased with the way the guys played. And I know our guys were excited to wear the old colors. All right, yeah, definitely no leaks in the Montana Athletic Department there. We didn't have any idea about that. Well, congratulations, Coach Houck. Good luck in the playoffs All next right, week. All right, Derek, thank you very much. All right, guys, back up to you. The 108th meeting between the Bobcats and the Grizzlies goes to the Grizz. 35-3, your final score from Missoula. Back after this to wrap things up. Five three, your final score from Missoula. Phil Buck, Grady Bennett, Mike Callahan up in the booth, fellas. Some final thoughts on this afternoon. Well, congratulations to Co Coach Hauk and his entire staff and all the players. Really hung in there. Gritty performance. Uh, again, when things weren't going well, as Coach Hauk mentioned, they really find a way to get it done. And it's been a staple of this team all year. They win football games. Doesn't matter how it looks. Doesn't matter what the final numbers say. The scoreboard favors the Grizzlies more often than the opponent, and that's what matters. Yeah, obviously you can see it there. That. Uh that's the way it went. Uh, I thought the Bobcats played hard. Uh, you just can't come into this stadium and not take advantage of every opportunity you get. Unfortunately, they just weren't able to do that early on. And then the second half, uh, the Grizzlies turned it on and just and took control of that game with that long drive, and, and that was really it. Also, Grizz fans, don't forget to visit MontanaGrizzlies.com for complete post-game coverage, news, and statistics on all Montana Grizzly athletics. The Grizzlies are headed to the playoffs. We find out who they'll take on in the first round tomorrow. Until then, Montana finishes the regular season 11-1 with a 35-3 win over their rival Bobcats. And we will wrap it up here in Missoula. For Grady Bennett, Mike Callahan, Amanda Maynard, Derek Berkeley, and the rest of our crew here in Missoula, I'm Phil Buck. Thanks for joining us, everybody. The Grizzly Gridiron Classics. Chase Reynolds finished the game with 115 yards and two scores. Reynolds and Mark Mariani were two other Grizz legends who, after their playing careers concluded in Missoula, went on to play in the NFL. Montana went to the national championship game again in 2008, where they ultimately fell to the University of Richmond. Thanks for watching week nine of our Grizzly Gridiron Classics. Next week, we'll head to 2009 in another national championship run for UM, but the Grizzlies had to get past ranked Eastern Washington first to even get there. See you then. Welcome in everybody to the rivalry edition of today's Bobby Houck Show. Uh, you guys, a big win over the Bobcats yesterday, and you did it in style, Coach. We did. There's nothing uh, better in the world than, uh, than beating your rival into the dirt, which is what <laughs> we did yesterday, and uh, uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, we enjoyed it. It's always fun to have a great day at your rival's expense, and, you know, I'm, I'm excited about it. I think I was paid the ultimate compliment last night. Uh, I was talking to an, a, a gentleman. He said he'd been following this, uh, our team for 40 years, and he said he's, he's known the head coaches and known that, and he said, you know what, Coach? He said, I've known every head coach over the last 30 or 40 years. And he says, we have never had, had a head football coach that hates the Bobcats more than you. <laughs> I think that was a compliment. So uh, yesterday was fun, uh, exciting, and uh, 
it's going to be fun watching these highlights. Today. It certainly is, and uh, I'd say that is a compliment coming from a Grizz fan. Certainly, your team now 11-1 and one, and sharing the Big Sky Conference title thanks to Weber State uh, coming up short against Eastern yesterday. How about that? You know, 11 was kind of the number. 11 wins on the season, 11 straight Big Sky championships, 111 years of uh, football here, and it was just really a, a cool deal. And uh, for us to win 11 straight Big Sky championships is uh, obviously very special. Talk about something special. When you guys hit the field yesterday, <laughs> that place yeah. went nuts. To see those guys come out of the tunnel wearing the old colors, yourself included, was, what was it like? To put well, that? It was really cool. And, you know, it's funny. There, I, I forget. I was talking to my wife this morning. You know, it didn't look all that out of place to us because it's kind of what we grew up with and when we were here in college and everything else. And wearing it was nothing new. But I, I forget, you know, when the last time those colors were worn, that stadium had uh, – probably less than half or about half the number of people it had in yesterday. And there are a lot of people who had never seen those before. And gosh, we look good in them, don't we? Looking sharp. And <laughs> tell you what, it got better and better. This uh, was one of the better plays of the oh, day for the Bobcats. Goodness, how about that? 84 yards on the second play of the game. Now, it's interesting. <clears throat> Dimitri. Boy. Yeah. yeah, what do you think of that? Uh, upon, second, upon a second look there, I, I didn't see him step out of bounds, but that's just me. Yeah, I didn't either, and, you know, we'll, we don't have replay in our league, obviously, but uh, <clears throat> that looked like it could have been a fumble, but uh, if that had been a fumble, then we wouldn't have the spectacular goal line stand. What a job by our defense. We haven't had, I don't know, and maybe ever in this rivalry game had a goal line stand like this, first and goal from whatever it was, the two or the three, and we wind up with the ball on the five going the other direction. That was huge, and... Uh, you know, uh, Crawford had 84 yards on that play. He had 26 or something on the last play of the game. So basically the first play and the last play of the game, uh, without that, uh, you know, they don't have many yards on the day. Here's Chase Reynolds as you guys get the ball back and we're able to get by your offense a little bit of, of room. You ended up punting the ball away here, but uh, that goal line stand, as you said, really set the tone. Huge. I love watching our guys. Our guys were so fired up and uh, – what a great deal for our offense to bang it out there, get some field position back, and, uh, you know, that was shades of things to come, obviously. Uh, and Dessen, you guys were in the backfield. The defense had pressure on Mark Dessen most of the day. That on third down to force a punt, and, uh, boy, this is trouble. This is going to be fun. Uh, you know, we, we punted it. Mark would have fair caught that ball had we been going the other direction with our return, but they punted it right into our return, and uh, some great blocks, obviously, and, uh, I think 75 yards later, he's in the end zone, and we're up 7-0, and uh, we're never going to trail in this football game. No, and uh, your boys are fired up. The stadium is fired up. Montana's up 7 nothing, as you said, and um, things would get better from there. This is another big play to this set up was, their, uh, only, this, their only points. This was the second of their two big plays on the day where they got points. Um, we had an empty check. Our corner, it was so loud in there, our corner couldn't uh, hear the check. And uh, he was playing a different coverage than the safety, and consequently we gave up the fade ball there. But as I said, if you, if you take out the long run at the start of the game and on the last play of the game, the 20-yard in that pass, they've got 140 yards total offense on the day. A dominating performance from your defense. Only gave up, I think, uh, just over 100 yards in the entire second half and only, of course, held the Bobcats yeah, three and, points. And, and again, if you take out that last play of the game for 26 or whatever it was, it's uh, it's... 60 total yards in the second half, which is really a cool deal. <laughs> so this would lead to the field goal. Their only points of the game. Three is a good number. Uh, obviously, we'd love to shut them out, but uh, giving up three is pretty dang good. Into the second quarter now, this, uh, they have the ball back. That was Demetrius Crawford, and uh, coming up to make the stop for a loss was Brandon Fisher and Shan Schillinger. That was great, great play by those guys. Uh, kicker obviously pushed this one right, and uh, again, there's just three on the board, and that's where it's going to stay. Uh, they would get the ball back after you guys uh, would punt it away on your next possession, and here comes the defense forcing a turnover. Five turnovers yesterday for the Bobcats. Five turnovers. You're never going to win a game, turn the ball over five times, unless you can generate four or five yourself. And uh, we, We've talked about the turnovers, you and I, Phil, and uh, we weren't uh, good in the turnover margin category early in the season, but now we end up leading the Big Sky Conference in turnover uh, margin. Thanks to yesterday's performance, Mike Ferreter down to the six-yard line. Great job by Mike there. You know, we went for it on fourth down a couple times in the first half. Um, just felt like it's that kind of game. And uh, 
you know, it, it's fun to bang it in there. It's a great job by Chase Reynolds smelling the end zone. He uh, had some great blocking up front. Mike had a good catch there. It was, a, it was a, you know, that was a nice drive to make the lead more comfortable. Reynolds, 27 carries on the day, 115 yards and two touchdowns. There's Brandon Fisher coming up to make another stop there. It's, it's uh, Fisher, Corwin. Uh, the guys are finishing him off. There wasn't a lot of yards after contact. He's a really good running back, and uh, you can see the miscues in the backfield. Those are the things that kill you. Now, their defense uh, rose up. We went for it a couple of times on fourth down. Uh, we, you know, I'd, I'd really love to see Jeff get his pads down here and get us the first down, obviously. But, you know, we, we've had some issues with our field goal team. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we're doing what we need to do to, to generate first downs and points. But uh, that's certainly not been an automatic field goal for us. And uh, that's why we went for it there. Well, there you see Rob Ash content to head into the locker room down 14 to 3. Still very much in the ball game at that point. Um, no doubt, you know, 14-3. It, it's, uh, it's better than being down 14-3, though, I guarantee you that. Mm -hmm. What was your message to the team uh, in the locker room? Well, we talked about a lot of things. Um, one of them is that we never uh, come in any Saturday afternoon to play for 30 minutes. We want to go play for 60. It's what we train to do uh, in, in uh, January, in March and April, in the summer, in August. Uh, we train to play for 60. And uh, that was basically the message is let's go out and beat them into the dirt the second half and uh, that's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, I certainly did that, Coach. Uh, I think one of the defining moments was that drive to start the fourth quarter. We'll certainly see that in the second half. Highlights the offensive line paving the way on that one. And uh, Our front guys have played well in, in this second half. They're going to play very well. That's right. Speaking of the offensive line, senior tackle Brent Russum joins us for this week's 60 Seconds. We'll be back after the break. Who's the biggest prankster on this team? Biggest prankster, J.D. Quinn. Most played on your iPod? Most played on my iPod? I don't have an iPod. Well, what do you like to listen to? I like Journey. There you go. Butt rock. Favorite video game? Oh, Final Fantasy. Favorite late night snack? Mmm, Taron Hilson likes cherry sours and so do I. Favorite pro athlete? Pro athlete? I like Keo Spikes, but Michael Phelps hot right now. Who has the messiest locker? Oh, I don't know. Um, probably one of the sloppy freshmen, like Sexy Chuck. Chuck <laughs> Burton. Favorite sports movie? Favorite sports. Varsity Blues is pretty good. What stadium do you most want to play in other than Washington Grizz? In D1AA, FCS. Anything you Any want. Any stadium. That one in Beijing was pretty cool. Wheel of Fortune or Jeopardy? Jeopardy. Alex Trebek. Home game in September or home game in November? Games in November. Why is that? Those are the ones they remember. Least favorite drill? EDDs, everyday drills. Person you hate going up against in practice? Coach Tom Howe. He's really good. Right, Brent, Russell. Brent Russell, thank you for your 60 seconds as a Grizzly. Thank you. 60 Seconds with a Grizzly is brought to you by Ameripride Financial, Tessier Losing and Associates, a financial advisory practice. Welcome back, everybody, to the Bobby Houck Show. The Grizzlies with a big win over their rival Bobcats yesterday. We're going over the highlights. Also, I think it's uh, fair to say, not a real big secret that we do tape this show earlier in the day here on Sundays. So at this point, it's a mystery as to who you guys will be playing this yeah, week. By we, the time the show airs, though, we will know. We'll know, and uh, hopefully you and I will have a chance to f film another segment of this later on. We'll talk a little bit about who we're playing. Uh, you know, we try to... Uh, cover our bases, get film in, do all that, and, and uh, you know, usually we're completely off base and wrong, so there's no way of knowing, and, and we'll find out this afternoon about 5 o'clock. Right, and as you said, we will tape that set final segment of the show a bit later, so stay tuned for that uh, at the end of the show. We will know who you guys are playing, and we'll get your comments on that. That would be great. Right now, we're still enjoying uh, yesterday's big win in the copper and gold at Washington. Yeah, the, co the, the copper and gold was really fun. Gosh, yeah. I can't tell you how. I didn't know it was going to be. I knew it'd be a big deal, but uh, you know, former players had tears in their eyes during the game. Man, it was great, and uh, you know, it was an interesting game. We were both teams were pretty banged up. You know, obviously, you notice we didn't play numerous guys yesterday. We had some guys really hobbled. Uh, they did too. You know, there was some some interesting things. You know, they we were we were probably able to overcome it a little more than they did. You know, there's a couple things. You know, when you when you lose average guys like their tight end. You know, it, it's he's a, he's an average player. You can get by that, but when you lose two quarterbacks and you're down to the third quarterback, 
that's really hard. And uh, that kid was in a situation where he had to come in and perform, and you know he really probably hadn't had the prep to do that. And that's just the way it worked out, and, and uh, they weren't able to overcome it, but we did. And I'm, I'm proud of our guys for coming back and doing that. Injury is certainly a tough part of the game of football. And uh, as you said, when you're down to your third-string quarterback, your options certainly limited. They've asked Mark Desson to do a whole lot down there. They, they really have, and uh, you know he, he's he's come in and given given him some good uh, time on the field. But uh, you know, fortunately, he wasn't up, up to the task yesterday. <laughs> Let's jump into the second half highlights. Uh, as we said earlier, going to be a lot of Grizz highlights here in the second half. That's good. And they start out with the ball, um, and uh, Demetrius Crawford. Coughs it up, another fumble. You can't turn the ball over any time, particularly in rivalry games, and uh, they were lucky to get on that one. They would get it back, however, uh, three plays later. Well, if this is two plays later, as Brandon Fisher gets. Tried to play a little uh, option game against us, you know, a little read zone pull, run the option play. Uh, obviously, wasn't real good for him, and here we're, we're seeing good pressure. We've got heat in his face. You know, he's a shorter guy, and he just throws the ball to Shan. That's a, a nice play. Yeah, threw it right right on the numbers. Good coverage. You can see the blocking downfield. We've got guys getting there, and uh, you know, shoestring tackle uh, gets them down, and that's going to be a few more yards for us. Yes. Uh, so the Grizzly offense gets the ball back. Did not take you guys long to this get it good, in the end. This is a really good catch by Mike Ferrito. You can see the guy coming, the safety coming over to to uh, uh, make the play on it, and tries to get his pad on the ball, and he can't. It's a great play by Mike, and then here's a great play by Mark. Unfortunately, it's his last play of the, the game. He, he, he got uh, rolled up there, and mm -hmm. you know, good throw, two good throws by Colt, two good catches by those guys, and you know, we don't like seeing Mark hurt, but uh, hopefully that will dissipate over the week, and he'll be able to go next weekend. Right, as we were just talking about during the break, you're not quite sure exactly where he'll be, but we did see him in the press conference after the game, and his spirits were up, and he certainly was walking around on that leg. So He was, and you know, there's Colt Anderson making a tackle for a loss on, on a little pressure there, and he, uh, you know, he was hobbled yesterday. He couldn't, uh, he couldn't play effective, real effectively or as effectively as he has, and uh, you know, it was good to see him make a few plays. He, he missed a few, too. All right, here we are, Coach. We're into the fourth quarter. They punt it down and down it at the two, and here comes the drive. Here come the Grizz. <laughs> 20 this, plays, no. 98 yards, 9 minutes and 56 seconds on this Yeah, drive. that's the uh, stick a dagger in them drive. Uh, that's a good hard run by Chase Reynolds. Uh, Cole made a couple of really nice throws on third down. You can see Dan Bowden scrapping and clawing for every yard. You see our guys covering down the field. Uh, Javen Sembrano. Had two nice catches in this drive Here's one uh, to convert uh, third downs. Uh, there's one of them, and uh, you know, really good by, uh, really good by our football team putting this one away. I mean, this this drive just salted the game away. Uh, it's a backbreaker for sure. Rob Schulte again on the, he's really emerged as a, a third down playmaker for you guys. That was third and fourteen and picks. The, Rob's, just done, Rob's done a nice job. Uh, you know, we had uh, fourth and real short there. And uh, we get good surge and get a get a yard and a half when we needed six inches, and here we go. Chase Reynolds again getting some good blocking up front. I think he had seven or eight yards before anybody got close to him. He there. did, and it's fun watching this. The best thing about these highlights is watching that clock tick uh, <laughs> as this thing goes away from them. And that, uh, as you said, was pretty much the dagger that the icy the cherry on top will be here <laughs> well, in a minute what do you think that guy was talking about to chase i don't know you just scored another touchdown on us to make it 28-3 <laughs> maybe he was saying hey it's a nice run Speaking and then of this nice is run. Uh, icing on the cake good job george mercer from libby montana gets himself an interception for a touchdown that was a uh, heck of a deal and uh good to see our team celebrating uh in the end zone and i don't know what the penalty was all about you're allowed to celebrate together uh, yeah, I, don't, I wasn't sure exactly what that penalty was either. Here's a replay, Coach. Maybe, it might have been on me being out on the <laughs> 50, uh, out on the middle of the field on the 50-yard line celebrating it. Uh, tell, <laughs> tell me about the emotion of. Uh, I mean, obviously this game was in hand at this point anyway, but to end it on this note. Well, like, like I said earlier, it's it's fun to to uh, beat your rival badly, and 35-3 uh, is really good. And how about that? The coach is wet. There's. Uh, uh, when you <laughs> when you get uh, that Gatorade bath, there, there's uh, no coach in America that doesn't love that because it means good things are happening for your football team. And uh, you can see our guys uh, 
they are fired up. Our crowd's fired up. And uh, it, it just doesn't get any better. <laughs> and coach is fired up. Oh, yeah, coach is fired up. Uh, it doesn't get any better than that. And, uh, you know, God love George Mercer for putting that final one in the end zone. Well, uh, Coach, you know, I, I try to stay pretty neutral around here, but I am a, gri <laughs> I am a, I am a Grizz alumni, so I'd be lying if I didn't say uh, that was pretty special for me to watch as well yesterday. It's the clock ticks down, and the Grizzlies are 11-1 and one heading into the postseason. Our guys are, uh, gosh, it's fun to see our guys fired up, and, you know, Dow giving me a ride across the field there. I just, uh, I love our guys. And uh, they're, they're a great group of young men. It's been a, a, an unbelievable uh, season to be 11-1, have our 11th straight Big Sky Championship. We're roaring into the playoffs. And, you know, who knows what the next couple of weeks hold for this program. But uh, th this has been just an awesome year. And uh, it's just I get emotional about it. I'm fired up. Uh, I really like our football team. And uh, it's, a, it's a really a privilege to be their head coach, it just—it's—it's it's really cool. So I'm—I'm—I'm I'm, uh, I'm enthused uh, beyond words. Well, it's great to hear you say that, coach. <laughs> and uh, well, you guys are still rolling. We are, and you know, you and I are going to have a chance to talk about that a little later today. Mm -hmm. But uh, gosh, I just I, everything about yesterday was special. If you, if you don't, uh, as a Grizz fan. Uh, if you can't embrace that, then gosh, I don't know. Then you, you got to find something else because uh, that was as, that was absolutely in college football. As, as a player, coach, fan, uh, it gets no better than yesterday. I mean, we, we beat our our hated rival 35-3. We locked up our 11th straight Big Sky Championship with a little help from Eastern Washington. It, it just proves how hard it is to run the table. Over the last three years, we've been 23 and one in Big Sky Conference play. Uh, we're in the top three, four teams in the nation now, and uh, we wore the throwback jerseys. It was just, I mean, it, it was a special day, and uh, gosh, I wish we could go back and relive it. I, if, if I could hit the rewind button and go back to yes, despite the butterflies and the, the, the nauseous feeling I always get for that game, or most Saturdays, if I could hit the rewind button and go back and do that, I'd do it all over again. It was just awesome. I think that goes for about uh, the 25, 26,000 people that were all in the building. <laughs> the yesterday. largest crowd to ever watch a football game in the state of Montana history. Wow, and it was a good one. It was good. So, well, 